There we go. We should be live now. The 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 masses yeah. shall hear the great conversation amongst the Arabs, Slavs, and mm. Yanks, uh, as usual. A thing that hopefully never gets boring. JT, I have only one thing to say to you, Vance. That my name's Dees. <laughs> <laughs> These nuts. I'm sorry. Uh, the only reason this, this is such a stupid fucking meme. Uh, the only reason this comes to mind is because I remember seeing a uh, a video of an African American gentleman, and there's like some security guy, and uh, he's trying to arrest him or something. And he's like, "What's your name, sir?" And the guy's like, "My name's Dees." He's like, Dees "Yeah, yeah." Dees what? Dees. And the guy just I looks at the camera. <laughs> I'll give you that. That one's good. That one's very, very, very good. But just oh, the, sure. the 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 guy saying these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that that one, I, I, that, oh. that one's just fucking wild. Because that guy's teeth mm. fucking freak me the fuck out. I can't, mm. I can't. Like, I, I, I think I have like uh, nightmares. Mm. Um, All right, wait, we're we're live, right? Yeah, we're live. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay. All right. Um, hello, everybody. Um, put put highs in the chat or something if if you guys can hear us. If everything sounds fine. Uh, if any of us need to be louder or quieter or something, um, then please do let us know. Uh, otherwise, yes, welcome to the June installment of uh, um, the, the, the uh, I guess, the monthly lives. Uh, there's ab absolutely no topic, set topic, like always. We're just going to chat shit. Um, so, yeah. That's if you have any questions, pop them in the chat. Uh, if our amateur asses actually see it, we will read it out loud and we will answer said questions, spam them as much as possible in order for us to have a higher chance of seeing it. Mm -hmm. Or use the super comment thing, yeah. whatever. Do whatever the fuck you want. But yeah, yeah as Hakim said, welcome. Yeah. Uh, uh, Diego Alvarez wrote, walked into Hakim laughing maniacally. I once w did a, a live thing and somebody told me, uh, uh, I have a Joker laugh, which <laughs> I don't think I do, but <laughs> well, I mean, yes, uh, Hakim is Joker. Uh, it would be a lot more boring, I think. Uh, maybe, uh, would as many people die? I don't know. I'm, I'm unsure. But <laughs> all right, it's just jokes, all jokes. Anyways, sorry, you got me. You're gonna say something. I cut you off. No. Oh, we can hear you just fine, Habibi. Oh, okay. Mm. JT stuck in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. JT no, stuck. He's just stuck in America. Mm. All right, guys. Can, 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 can you, you hear guys JT? hear JT? Because he's been talking this entire time. Um, hold up. Hey, can you hear JT say something? We cannot hear JT. We can't hear, he says. I wonder how... Can okay. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, the, no some people are saying JT chat. can't be heard. All right. <laughs> I'll just pull uh, up the screens. <laughs> Fuck it. He's uh, JT is going to try and attempt to fix it yeah. in the background, well, and he shall join us with his glorious uh, sexy, Habib, sexy voice. I think, yep. uh, JT, Habib, I think uh, all you need to do is just go on uh, uh, OBS and then just like remove your uh, audio input and then add it again. Or maybe just add it and make sure that's connected. Or that you're not muted. It's okay. Uh, I, in the meantime, as he's doing that, uh, somebody said... Um, uh, JT is tied up under Hakim's bed. Uh, no, he's not, but I have graduated from being underneath the bed to being above the bed. I am now <laughs> sitting on top of my bed because uh, I've moved apartments. Um, so, yeah. JT is speaking now. So, if you can hear him, please say. Yes, if you can now hear JT, please confirm with uh, free JT in the, in the right. chat. Exactly. Mm. Right, right. <laughs> Havana syndrome, no. <laughs> Uh, JT's life matters and voice yeah. matters. Was JT cancelled? <laughs> uh, JT, right. but keep talking, keep talking. Yeah, so yeah. That, 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 yeah, yeah. People are saying still no, they can't hear him. <clears throat> All right. All right. <clears throat> All right. All right. All right. Uh, somebody. Keep working and see. Somebody wrote, what's going on with Zizek? Also cannot hear JT. Yes, uh, that's more to deal with $5. Thank you very much. Um, what's going on with Zizek? He had a stroke a, a little while back, and I think this is just a sequel of the stroke. <laughs> I mean, if you read the article, it's not as, as inflammatory as, as the title, but uh, still, yikes. Um, okay, I think I got it, boys. Test, test, test. Can you, can you guys hear me? 
Can you hear JT now? Can you hear JT now? Let us know, please. Keep saying uh, something, JT. Keep like for a longer period of time in case uh, it's coming. Test, test, test. One, two, three. I am not canceled. I am back in Texas. <laughs> okay. People yes, said... JT is here. Uh, should, oh, should, thank goodness. Okay. We can hear JT. Okay, we're here. We praise, did it. Praise, uh, praise whatever oh, diet but... you believe in or don't believe in. You know, uh, I, was... I already fucking posted about this <laughs> fucking shit. Uh, like <laughs> I like I, everybody. Everybody knows <laughs> that I fucking love this person. Uh, mm. Fuck yeah. There you go, JT motherfucker. Yeah. Okay, for sure now they can hear you. Uh, I just want to touch on the JT thing before the super chat disappears and the, uh, on the Zizek thing. Uh, Zizek, JT, same thing, basically. Mm -hmm. Before the, <laughs> the, just one is sexier than the others. So and now you guys decide mm -hmm. which one. Uh, <laughs> but uh, now I read the whole fucking article. I already posted about it on Twitter. It's, uh, I, his just contrarian nature and the need to have hot takes on everything uh, hurts yeah. a lot when it comes to his geopolitical uh, analyses. In my opinion, he should stick to philosophy in an area in which, in my opinion, he's one of the most brilliant people currently alive. But whenever he talks about current interstate relations, he really, he really, basically, he doesn't uh, like say anything wrong. He doesn't say anything. This in yeah. this article, <laughs> uh, he said nothing. He basically said we should uh, support Ukraine against an invasion, but also NATO is fucked up because it is uh, an extended arm of U.S. imperialism. So we need a NATO that is not an extended arm of oh U.S. Lord. imperialism, which literally cannot exist. That yeah. would no longer be NATO. So, so in a way, he's yeah. making fun of people for being unrealistic by saying, oh, we should all just sit down at a table and we should try to find a peaceful resolution to this problem, blah, blah, blah. And he's calling them unrealistic. And then he is giving a solution which is insanely unrealistic. But towards the end of the article, he spends like one fifth of the article talking about Julian Assange and how he mm -hmm. should be free. So I like the only way to excuse this very, very, not just mediocre, very bad, like, written in 20 minutes type uh, type of article is that uh, everybody wanted him to write about Ukraine. He wanted to write about Julian Assange. Nobody cares. Real, let's be <laughs> realistic. Uh, so he was like, okay, I'll write this Ukraine thing just to mm. input like a Julian Assange thing in the bottom to raise awareness about that. It's mm. the only way I could find it in my brain for it to be excusable, even though it's not because he literally said nothing that's the whole article if if but, these guys who are not mm. good if they were good we should support them against these other guys who are not good that's literally the art it's mm. it's boring look so, somebody said it in the in the chat and it was like yeah uh, zizek has pulled a uh, chomsky grind set <laughs> the, the, <laughs> mean, the meaning there being is that uh, he wants to get published so he has to say shit like this um you can't be you can't have an uh, like an opinion column in the new york times and be like you know what uh <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the construction of socialism is the only thing that's yeah. gonna fix the intrinsic and the structural issues of a uh, uh, of capitalism. That doesn't work, so that's why. Um, but yes, uh, that's that's about Zizek. But I I stick to the fact that yeah, it's a stroke. Stick away from the stroke. Um, and uh, <laughs> yes, hopefully there's another stroke that corrects this or kills Oof. him, depending on where his political Jesus. line goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh man, it would be great to have him on the, to get him on the po podcast. But we looked into it, and you have to. I think he charges, and the amount is like twenty thousand dollars or something. Yeah, so, that's probably for big events, not because I've seen him on like extremely yeah. tiny podcasts. This is a big event. Yeah, I don't know still, what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, I mean, yeah, see, see. No, we, we need to convince him this is a tiny event. The <laughs> program has become massive, but we need to tell him, oh no, we're just small communists. Come, uh, Daddy Shishik, yeah. please, so that he doesn't <laughs> charge us twenty fucking k. You know, mm. as Hakim said. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> oh man! But yeah, so that was uh, that was that was that about Zizek. Um All right, perfect. Animation We've had works a couple of a couple of questions come in. If you guys want to start tackling those, had yeah, a, yeah, for sure. Let's a go. few hellos as well. Hello from Arizona. Hello, Howdy. Uh, I saw a text in here. Hello from Dallas. Howdy, neighbor. How you doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> Salutations. <laughs> We've got one, Hakeem, this is probably your area of expertise. Any guy, any books you guys recommend on the history of the USSR? Uh, I think I have a video on this and one of my book recommendations you can check out. But if you want a good, uh, a huge uh, work um, for the early period, especially um, uh, uh, Sidney Webb's, uh, Sidney and Beatrice Webb's um, Communism and New Civilization, I think it was called. It's up until the late 30s. It's very good um, uh, and very large. It's over a thousand pages. Um, there is uh, Carr's, C-A-R-R's, um, three-volume book on the October Revolution, which is for the Revolution period. 
Um, Alec Nov has a economic history of the USSR that he's updated up until the dissolution, which is pretty good. I mean, it's decent, but it's one of its well, the only books of its kind. Uh, otherwise, there's a lot of specialized literature depending on which um, what's it called uh, um, period you're looking into. So just like write to me on on, on Discord or like on the uh, server, uh, and then I can uh, help you with whatever you're looking for. Big yeah, that's it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Um, we've got we've got <laughs> one here from Fiend Girl mm. 08. Um, JT, I want to hear your take on the Texas GOP resolution that was just released. I haven't read the whole thing. I believe the thing that everybody's talking about is uh, they want to secede again. Um, they do this every once in a while where they they whip up a fervor about seceding from the United States. Um, here's the thing: as much as I would like to see the United States fracture and and fall apart. Um, I live in Texas, and if we were to secede, yes, the United States would lose a bunch of um, awful reactionary people, but you'd also have a, a you know several million normal, decent human beings stuck in a cowboy fascist police state, um, including <laughs> me, which I would not very much enjoy. Um, when we would if we would if we were to to secede uh w you guys saw what happened with our electrical grid in that last freeze i mean it, it completely failed um we don't have the infrastructure to support ourselves in the event of another catastrophe like that i mean the summers are getting hotter the winters are getting more unpredictable i think very shortly things would get very very bad um and that's not something we should wish on the average person i think it would be interesting to see um, I, I think, you know, having the, the lines of the United States redrawn would kind of maybe trigger something in the average American's mind, like, oh, maybe things do still happen. Maybe we're not living in the end of history. Maybe things can change. But that would be at the expense of um, a bunch of Texans needlessly suffering. So I, I don't think they're going to pull it off and actually secede. But uh, if they did, man, that would be that would be quite a change. It'd be interesting to see at least. I would like to see just to see what would happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, like, I mean, they, they... we've got. I was. I've been thinking about it the last few days. If we've got, like, would we keep the leadership that currently exists? Would it trigger like a, the formation of a new Texas Constitution? Would everyone get booted out? Would I don't know. Would uh, people like me be allowed to run for for Texas office, whatever that would look like, as open communists? I don't know. Would we be rounded up and put in camps? Probably, but <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, Ted Cruz will be the uh, the supreme leader. Of, oh, of, he will be the paramount paramount leader of Texas oh. of the Texan Republic. Um, he ain't okay. even a cowboy. We, He's a snake oil salesman. That that, that might be true, but <laughs> what I do know is that the People's Republic of Chattanooga would come to to, to liberate them. It's like Vietnam oh, and yes. Laos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not Laos, excuse me. Vietnam and uh, Kampuchea. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, let's see. All right. There, there are more questions, but I can't actually see the things because uh, I, I don't have the studio open. So okay, so I, yeah, I can scroll yeah. back a little bit. Uh, let's see what we've yeah, got. Thanks. One that was... So, for me, they disappear. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Um, thanks for brightening my day with this live stream. You're very welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, we've got mm -hmm. some that are saying deleted by the deprogram. I don't know what's going on yeah, there. Yeah, I deleted them. It's an underage person that's talking about alcohol. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's Good call. Ah, okay. <laughs> nice um, Thank you. How's JT's basement? You go up making Hakeem. <laughs> well, first of all, it's Billy and Bob, number one. Uh, and uh, number two, um, is you go up make a himbo. Now, he is a, a fairly intellectual, but he's also a, a beautiful, gentle giant. So mm. uh, I don't know. That's up to you to decide. <laughs> um, uh, I don't have a basement. If you knew anything about Texas, you'd know our, our soil is very clay, and uh, we can't mm. dig past a certain uh, a certain depth, and also we can't grow much. Um Depending but on that's the soil. exactly yeah. why you create a basement to keep your slaves in, because <laughs> yeah. nobody no would look suspected. for a basement. Yeah, there's yeah. no basements in the whole now independent state of Texas. So why would a cop actually go looking for the chained up uh, streamer uh, bimbos that you got stuck inside? Good so question. You're, you're fine. It's well, uh, we've got one. Believe uh, in your own intellect. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Any books on how gulags functioned? Uh. Nothing comes to mind. There's research. There's a lot of like research papers on it, but any one book, nah, nothing that comes to mind. I apologize. 
Yeah, that's an interesting one. That's not one I'm well versed on either. Um, mm-hmm. We've got one here. Thank you for accompanying me during a long session of kinesiology. Best regards from the geographical south. Thank you for stopping by. We appreciate it. Enjoy. Uh, uh, let's see. What I think is kinesiology? Like Isn't the study, study of movement? Yeah. Or I've, okay. Maybe. I think so. Something like that. Dr. Hakim, you tell us. Uh, it's, this is not something that uh, you really study in, in med school, at least in where I yes. study. <laughs> yeah. Kinesiology is the scientific study of human body movement. Uh, physiological, anatomical, biochemical, and uh, neuropsychi- uh, neuropsychological principles and mechanisms of movement. Um, okay, orthopedics and sports uh, psychology, motor control, rehabilitation. Uh, yeah, I think there's more, more with rehab stuff, for example. Hmm. Um, yeah which uh, we did like three weeks of in, in, in med school. Um, and uh, all I remember is that our, what's it called? The um, uh, instructor was a bit of a pervert and he really liked <laughs> to touch everybody. And Jeez. it was very unpleasant. <laughs> Gross. But, you know, but it's, it's part of the job. I need to massage yeah, your yeah. ass, girl. You know? Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, exactly. He'd come to me and he'd be like, mm. and he'd be like mm, yes, I want to see all of you in your underwear. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Hand really moves up that thigh and accidentally yeah. grabs them balls, and Hakeem looks at him. He's like, "Are you a member of the KGB, sir?" Because <laughs> if you are, then you have to get to licking. That's the only way that I know. That's the only way. <laughs> you need to prove your credentials. You would comrade. like that, wouldn't you? Oh God. <laughs> oh man. But yeah. Uh, yeah, somebody said someone like Fortnite. Simon. Exactly right. yeah. yeah, we got Simon Stensick saying solidarity from Denmark. Uh, hey. Thank you so much. Your country doesn't exist, but I appreciate it. Thank you for your work, comrades. I'm kidding. Nah, Denmark is fine. Denmark is fine until it isn't, but it's fine. Uh, then we got uh, Bruno Santos. Uh, guys, a part of like donating here isn't just us answering your questions, but sometimes on random giving you the extreme privilege of offending you. Uh, so just expect <laughs> it if it comes in. It's it's a it's a bonus that we give. Uh, Bruno Bruno Santos. Hi, TY for the podcast. I have a question, Hakim. Do you still yeah. respond to Twitter DMs? Have you, I love this question. Oh, oh, I have you. I have you as a friend on Discord. Thank mm-hmm. you for adding me. Should I ask you there? Yeah, you can. You can ask me on Discord. I don't think you should bother asking me on on Twitter DMs anymore because I don't even open them. There are people who have messaged me like a year ago and I still haven't opened it. I get like maybe in a week like 200 dms or something insane like that so uh it is quickly gotten out of pace so i uh, there's absolutely no way i can i can get to any of them uh up until like 40,000 subs i could answer every single one but then started getting to a point where i would have to spend like two hours every day answering dms uh, this, this that was unsustainable sadly and this is uh, why my okay. dms are closed uh, exactly right yeah i still have them open just in case uh, every once in a while but uh like maybe somebody will send me something interesting but um for the most part not uh, Alan McLeod. Actually, Alan, like, Alan McLeod's here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, baby. Hey, hey, sexy. Hey. He says, "When are you guys getting Alan McLeod back on the show?" Hmm. I wonder. <laughs> I no wonder. Hmm, I kind of don't really... like the guy. I don't know. Like that <laughs> one episode wasn't that good. So I don't. I don't think we 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 should bring him back on ever again. Like <laughs> he 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 made us all look a bit stupid because he's really smart <laughs> and I don't like that. So like maybe maybe chill off on on that Alan dude. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For those like who aren't aware, Alan is uh, awesome. Mint Press News, check out his yeah. stuff. And he's, we've yes. had him on for one episode of the podcast. And who knows, maybe he'll uh, appear on another sometime soon. Yeah. I don't know. A reprise, an encore, if you will. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, all right. Uh... On. There's a bunch of fucking a bunch of good questions, but it's, it's a, a bunch of people I mentioned is like, oh, how many f bombs is Hakim getting from? I can't help it. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> English isn't the real language to me, so uh, they, just, they just slip out. <laughs> you uh, two comes in with ten bucks. Thank you so much. With the JT, what is your opinion on the uh, Tsupusa? I love reading it in Serb Croatian because it sounds a bit funny. Tsupusa, CPUSA, CPUSA sounds much more badass. Uh, I am a member. What is your uh, opinion, JT? You have been put on the burning chair of oh potentially no. saying the wrong thing. I'm dum, ready to be dum, canceled. Dum, 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 um, dum. I, I I'm all about getting involved in whatever organization is near you and whatever you think is doing good work. If you've got like a radical DSA branch near you, that's good. Join them and and do see what they're doing. Learn the ropes of organizing. Uh, CPUSA generally very favorable opinion. Um, they're one of the older ones in the U.S. and as they are, you know, explicitly communist, I think that's 
uh, a good thing. I don't like it when organizations try to be like, well, we're, we're you know, we're a worker oriented party and we try to, you know, defend the rights of, of the working class. Like, just come out and say it. Just be socialist. Be proud of it. Uh, help normalize mm. the terminology, and I think the CPUSA does a pretty good job of that. But obviously, obviously, not every branch is going to be as effective mm-hmm. or as as uh, I don't know ideologically sound as some other branches. But uh, it, take it on a case by case basis. If yours is good, absolutely work with them. It's a it's a huge benefit. Somebody said Club Penguin USA, <laughs> <laughs> which is exactly exactly right. Um... <laughs> Uh, Mary yeah, fuck uh, kill Reagan Thatcher Rumsfeld. Oh, Who the fuck okay. was Rumsfeld? Donald oh, Rumsfeld, war criminal. Yeah. Um, his memoirs are. He published hmm. his memoirs recently, if I remember right. Okay, this is this is what you kill Thatcher because that thing she's a witch. She needs to be in the fucking ground, and her grave should be turned into a gender neutral bathroom. Um, that's number one. Uh, I think you should fuck Reagan because he looks submissive. I don't know why. I just get that vibe. Um, he looks he's like kind of he... hot. Like we gotta admit, it's that it's that yeah. conservative himbo face. When he it's, was young, yeah, kind of hot. When he was you young know, and a, a movie star, he would three years like in he... prison, and I, I, uh, you know, think about it. <laughs> he lo- he looks like he would put up an impotent resistance, but he wants it secretly, so he's not gonna fight too. You know. Um, as for uh, Rumsfeld, you know, he's made so many other people miserable. I guess we'd marry him and make him miserable. Like, in, in, <laughs> I think that's cheat, on him, cheat on him with, uh, with the fucking Reagan. <laughs> you probably Powell. fucking love it. Like, yes, cuck me with Reagan. Cuck me, daddy. Oh, with my Reagan. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it could be this. What's it called? The turkey neck? That fucking disgusting oh, God. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I can just imagine. Mm, yes, it's slick with sweat. Oh, JT, please. To... I'm going to step can, away like, from you the can, like, take it and you can wrap it around your thing and you can just slide through that. Uh, I don't, don't like mouth. this. You know, it's like you, you can like wrap it as a little hot dog like, <laughs> on it and it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, fucking perfection, dude. Oh, oh, actually, it's not kind of nice, you know. It's, 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 yeah, it's, yeah. Hey, you you probably would invent a whole new STD. We oh. just invented the kink. There you go. We just invented yeah. the kink. Yeah, yeah, I'm surrounded by freaks. Rumsfeld looks like the type to use like military in windows. You know, in the in the bedroom, right? And oh. uh, hey, I'm all for it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kink shame. <laughs> That's called a nussy hacking. What is a nussy? Nick, oh fucking you, <laughs> degenerates! <laughs> oh god, you made me say it. Oh lord, <laughs> fuck. I remember I saw this thing the other day. Uh, this is not, you know, like uh, citrus, but you want to claim that something is citru- citrus-like. Mm-hmm. So they say citrusy. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Get that fucking... citrusy. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking animals have ruined shit like this, right? Can't... Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Yes, yeah. Like, I, um, I'm not a fan of, like, I genuinely am not a fan of uh, fish because I've had horrible experiences with the only other thing on planet Earth that smells and tastes like fish. So I completely feel your pain, Hakim. <laughs> God. Oh, fuck. All right. Um, Drone Nussi. Okay, perfect. Um, go- <laughs> Somebody just came back from a job interview. How'd it go? Flat Garfield. Let us know. I- I'm interested. Hopefully you got the job, or if it's a garbage job, I hope you didn't get it, and I hope you find something better. Mm. Um, all right. Okay, there's a bunch of uh, people who have asked some stuff. Hold up. Um... Uh, hold on, we already uh, answered this. Um, we already answered this. Anybody from, um, she, she, <laughs> she, she, be a wolf. Well, I thought it was like she as in Shia, and then L- L- okay, whatever. Five dollars. Uh, thank you very much. He says, any book recommendations on Mao and the Great Leap Forward? Uh, there's Red Star over China. You start there. That's the best book um, yeah. uh, on the era. Afterwards, the Great Leap Forward. There's a lot, but it's almost always garbage. Um, but yeah, DM me and I'll send you some recommendations. But for the most part, there are very few things that are good. Um, there's some Chinese authors that have something decent, though. And then you go up and a question for you. What is the food from the Balkans that everyone needs to try, and why is it chivapi? Yeah, it's chivapi. It's chivapi <laughs> and pleskovitsa. Pleskovitsa is better because it's basically a flatter, massive chivap. And it uh, it is proof that we are the oldest people of the world because the greatest <laughs> staple of modern culinary shit is the burger. And they have literally stolen it from us. But never go to Serbia or Bosnia and call it a burger. You will get your, your yourself castrated. <laughs> yes, but you have a big burger, basically what you guys call a burger, but like three times bigger uh, in between uh, two uh, beautifully homemade uh, pieces of bun. 
and with uh, Paprika Pavlatsi and with Urnebes and with some fucking, oh my God, I'm, I'm falling. Mm. Yes, uh, but Chevapi is amazing. Chevapi, yes, because it's everything meat, uh, meat related is, uh, is the shit. And when you get the salads, get the little salads mm. that are like in, what do I call that? Like in hummus form, not, they're not <laughs> like hummus, but they're like dips, but they're not dips. Yeah. That's disgusting. They're not dips. Yeah. They're uh, shit that you put on top of bread or on top of you, your meat they, and then you it's eat. Like it's like bruschetta. Like it's, it's all like cut up very thin okay. and fine. Uh, but you can still tell that it's the individual vegetables. Uh, very common to our parts of the world. Hmm. Um, yep. But yeah. Uh, Henry Fournier sent $10. Thank you very much. He said, I want to say thank you to all, all for keeping me fit. I listen to you while I do what I call urban hiking, walking around six to eight miles. That's very good. You should continue with that. I remember I used to, um, when Proles of the Roundtable was still a podcast, rest in peace, Proles, uh, Proles Pod, um, I used to gym. Uh, to uh, I used to always uh, go to the gym um, listening to podcasts, and they were my favorite podcasts to listen to. Um, so I hope there are other people who are, who are continuing that tradition and uh, listening to us um, while working out. But yeah, uh, Harold Godwinson sent five uh, pounds. Thank you very much. He said, "What's your views on the rail strikes in the UK and the effectiveness of strikes in general?" Um, rail strikes have they have there been any recent ones? I know, but there oh, yeah. was quite a few in the past decade. Right now, just... ongoing. Okay, yeah. I didn't know this. Oh, I had no idea. Okay, well, well, well <laughs> I'm unplugged. <laughs> well, now, um, but effectiveness of strikes strikes are great, particularly general strikes. But there needs to be a directed political program um, and uh, you know a party to guide this energy. You can't just have something because it'll always fizzle out. And there's no when there's no program, there's no actual plan. Um, it can be easily co-opted. It can be uh, directed into uh, like liberal or uh, reformist uh, directions, and then nothing actually comes of it. Uh, um, and I use as reference pretty much every single American uh, popular movement uh, in the past like fifty years. Rip lol. Yeah. So, well, well. I talked to a random uh, English dude that drives a train from Plymouth to Edinburgh. Uh, Edin Edinburgh, picky fucking blinders. Uh, every fucking day, he was a very cool dude. Uh, he was this chubby, like fifty-five year old that came to my part of the world to have some fun for like two weeks when he took uh, his break. And I learned everything there is about trains. And he told me, you know, the strikes are coming. I'm gonna be there when they're there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The unions are why we even get any of the benefits that we do. But every most of the shit is privatized. So depending on basically which company you're in, you you have certain benefits you don't have in the other one, and uh, you you know. Uh, usually the first job that you get in, in the specific uh, railway company you're stuck with for life, et cetera, et cetera, but that's all boring. What's interesting is, uh, uh, like, I got obsessed with it. I tried <clears> to <throat> hype him up to feel, like, good about himself, which he should because the, 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 the railway system is the bloodline of, uh, of any civilization. And what he does is literally help uh, the life continue normally by getting us all the goods and getting all the people where they need to be on time, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I, I asked him everything there is to ask about trains and about his job and shit. I nerded out super hard. But then mm -hmm. I really fucked up and I asked him, I asked him, so you told me about the good parts of the job, but what are the worst part of the job? Hoping he would say the hours or something. He's like, oh, I killed seven people. I was like, oh, oh my, my God. God, you fucking idiot. You just ruined the whole fucking evening. Everybody went quiet in the in the room. And he was like, yeah, I didn't kill them. I don't feel like, yes, I have nightmares. But uh, you know, seven motherfuckers jumped in front of my, my train from time to time. And I never really thought about it. That's like a part of your job. You know, and he's always like when there's like just blood fucking splatters all over my screen. He's always like, hopefully it's a cow or a dog or something and not another 19 year old. Jeez. Uh, and yeah, yeah. So that was a part of the job. And we were uh, we were fucking around later and we were obviously the conversation went to um, what was it? Uh, yeah. What? Uh, how to, can you recognize by looking at somebody's face that uh, that they've killed someone? And the bartender couldn't hold it in. Uh, we were like 10 people talking. The bartender couldn't hold it in. And he was like, uh, uh, maybe we should ask the guy here who actually killed people. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then it, he fucking died laughing. No, I like people to take it, take it, uh, take it slowly. Take it not so um, uh, on the face. Uh, no, take it on the face. Was that the expression? When you take it on the face, then you have a sense <laughs> of humor, right? When Okay. Self-deprecating, et cetera, yes. et cetera. But it was... Uh, it was, it, it, all I'm saying is be careful what questions you ask because you can get people in hardcore PTSD fucking moments. Uh, though with him, it didn't seem like, like it was. It was, like it's all, it was all, like all the deaths were kind of fucked up, uh, but the, the, it's super fucked up when they don't just jump out immediately. 
but like when like the train is like 300 meters away and I can't stop, but the guy's like staying there, like staring right at me. And I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? And um, yeah, there you go. Extra info on um, on train suicides. Uh, next question. <laughs> I, I just one. It's not the guy's fault. The driver's fault. No, like he can't nothing you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, we've got one here from a cop. A cop. I hope it's not a cop. <laughs> we don't <laughs> need cops in here. Um, how do you stay motivated to read theory and organize when it's so easy to just drink beer and watch TV? Um, that was just the eternal uh, question. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> it depends. It depends on the person. Like um, for me, if I'm like if I just sit down to read a book, it's probably not going to be theory if I'm reading something for just to relax. But if I'm traveling, like if I'm on a plane or something, it's very easy for me to read theory. I don't mm -hmm. know why. Maybe because it's just like, I don't know. I, I, if I'm traveling for work, I feel productive. So I think, oh, I'll just read some theory and, and brush up on that. Um, but also, like, don't disregard the importance of like drinking beer and watching a movie or something because that is, uh, you know, as, as liberal as it sounds, self-care. You want to make sure that you're not depressed all the time and you're not working on you, you don't always have to be going 24 7 it is okay to relax and and put the theory aside for a little bit yeah. uh my advice is i agree completely with with jt um you should be able to to, to relax it's not don't you know push yourself to uh points that you can't uh you know endure past um but i'll, I'll give the prophetic advice which is uh, the best things that you can do are things that you can do in like small amounts but frequently uh, and regularly so if you want to read theory, don't try to sit with a book and then finish it in one go. You can read a, a page or two or three or five each day um, and just kind of go through it that way. Um, mm -hmm. I think that is something that would help most people. Great advice. Um, because then it will create a, at least a, a routine uh, of getting through this. Um, but yeah, uh, that, that, that's uh, otherwise uh, half the time is just like sheer, uh, um, what's it called? Uh, what the, what's the fucking term in English? Um, like discipline, no, motivation. Describe it. Yeah, like discipline. Yeah, like a drive. Mm -hmm. Like you force yourself to to read shit because sometimes exactly what you read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just it sucks. Sometimes you can read something that sucks, but you you need the information. You need to learn it, so you just fucking uh, 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 plow through it. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, the, 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 the two of them gave you very pragmatic uh, and very good uh, all, all rules that I follow myself. Just when it comes to specifically not, not reading fiction or not reading something that you need for a good grade, but, but reading something that is related to yeah. a, uh, a systematic ideological school of thought. Um, quite literally try to bring up fervor in yourself and motivation before reading it by remembering why you got into said ideology in the first place and remind yourself, it works for me, maybe it's not going to work for everybody, of like uh, the things and the wrongs and blah, 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 you know what I'm going to say, that you've seen in the world which have brought you closer to, in this case, Marxism. Uh, and when you sit down and go through some very dense fucking shit, if you have it in your subconscious that you're doing this in order to uh, grow your knowledge in the field, in order to later on apply it, in order to <clears throat> right the wrong that you've experienced or somebody close to you has experienced or something that is constantly happening in your community, et cetera, et cetera. Try to dig out, try to dig out the, the motivation because the just passionate reading is very different than reading for reading's sake. And yes, 90% of the time you will, it will have to be disciplined and you sit and you go through it. But in th with those 10% where it's passionate reading, uh, you will be able to condense so much more info than in the other 90 and you will be able to go through so much more stuff much more quickly because your brain will realize that this is very important shit that I'm, I'm, I'm currently processing and that I need to remember and uh, not only remember, but when it comes to it, like theory, understand. It's not just about knowing, uh, you know, the terms. It's actually under more importantly, understanding what said terms mean and what said, uh, said analyses <clears throat> of different economic, social, et cetera, et cetera, uh, systems uh, represent. So once you motivate yourself enough, it goes, it goes much faster. But when you don't have the motivation, yeah, it's, it's, it's discipline, as Hakeem said. Also, it's not something you have to do entirely by yourself. Like th one of the best yes. things you can do is, is read with friends or join a book club or something, because not only do you get to have the social interaction, but you get to talk about it together. So if there's something you don't understand, maybe someone else has a better grasp on that section and you can kind of work it out together. And that's a great way to um, not only understand it a little better, but help you to remember it because you'll remember those interactions.
Yeah, exactly right. That's that's actually excellent advice. Um, get a breeding buddy or a group or something. That's um, uh, and some people make you like just procrastinate, but for a lot of other people, it, it really does work and it helps you like plow through this shit. And yeah. hey, you build a social connection over something that you mutually learn from. Why not? And it keeps you accountable um, too. If you've got a good a good group of people and you meet on a regular basis, you know, okay, I've got to get this chapter done by next week, and then you've mm -hmm. got a deadline, so you can't keep putting yeah. it off. Um, but easy plug here for deprogram. Uh, uh, what's it called discord server because we do have a yes. book club in there uh which is pretty cool yes shout out to my pp small <laughs> who's uh, <laughs> yeah. the uh <laughs> the moderator the, of the uh, book who uh, does amazing fucking work the guy is a saint for putting up with the bullshit right he's amazing um uh, but yeah he's also one of the organizers uh for 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 the um uh, book club for the reading group so yeah so do join and uh go in and and, and uh, set your role and all that kind of stuff and then you can uh um, have at least online uh, some sort of reading groups. You can't have one in your local area. Mm. Mark says Paul is in the chat. So, hey, everybody hey. say hi. Oi, <laughs> Howdy, what's Paul. up, mate? Everybody, uh, right, Paul is sexy. <laughs> <laughs> which he is, which he is. It's a shame. I haven't mm. heard his voice in a while. Um, I've been starved for... Uh... Somebody said something also, um, which I, I want to comment on. Hold on. Uh, yeah, Sever Dislike said, is Lenin his sassiest in State of the Revolution or imperialism by his form of capitalism? I'll say one thing. It's, if it were, we're talking about the text, then State of the Revolution, he's absolutely the sassiest. But something I love about imperialism, uh, no, no, not imperialism. Sorry, uh, it was left-wing communism and fatal disorder. That was the, the thing I'm, I'm thinking about. Uh, when he finished it uh, as a pamphlet in one of the, um, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, congresses that they had for all the various European uh, socialist parties um, he went, uh, he stood up in the middle uh, and went to all the delegate uh, tables and would start handing them out <laughs> to the individual <laughs> delegates he was like here you should read this here, uh, here fucker <laughs> get roasted he was a sassy uh, boy wasn't he I love him, my god bless him um, but yeah uh, so that, that was that uh, hold on we got a few more as well we got two. We got one on the opinion on international Marxist tendency by Ali the Cat, and then one by uh, Loco Guevarist on uh, the people's, the new people's army in the Philippines and Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. That's a big question, my man. Yeah, <laughs> you, guys, you guys love your big questions. Jesus Christ. Um, uh, hold up, hold up, hold up, because I, I already forgot what you what you mentioned. You said something about international international Mar international are, Marxist um, tendency. Yeah, uh, international Marxist exactly. tendency. They're Trotskyites. Um, they're still of the type uh, of, of like you know newspaper handing types. Um, so no idea uh, who those are. Uh, get get the pitchforks. Uh, says please adjust audio too quiet. Can you ma mention who whose audio is too quiet? Um, but yeah, uh, the um, uh, IMT is yeah is is a mess. Um, I don't think they're even they even have any real organization. Um, and when you go on their like social media pages and stuff like that, it's all like anti-Soviet shit and like polemics about things that are dead and gone. It's so stupid, really. Um, at some point, you have to just start doing analysis of current things and forget and stop calling everything fucking Stalinist. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like fucking, oh, the Stalinist tendencies of the Republican Party. Fucking shut Aye. up. Um, that, I'm not saying they said that, but like, yeah, you know, uh, the, the, there are these types. Um, yeah, get a life, yeah, go uh, touch grass. Fucking Exactly nerd. right. So that was the first one. The second nerd. one was from Guivars. He asked about the, the uh, um, movement in New the New People's Army, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, it's a people's war going on in the Philippines. It's been going on for more than 50 years now, I think. Um, they're on the 52nd year, probably now. Probably going to um, go on for another 50. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sadly. Bro. Who knows? Hey, you know what? Uh, like Len said, some years week, some weeks years. So uh, maybe yeah. let's hope you eat your words in two weeks and there's going to be a socialist yeah. Philippines. Let's hope. Inshallah. <laughs> um, but otherwise, yeah, there's, there's not much to say. Um, they're an interesting movement. They have some aspects that are a bit sketch, but a lot of it is also very, very good. Um, the uh, uh, public or the not the under, the underground segment, of course, they're uh, heroic for the things they do. Uh, but the people who are really in the in the fray, who, who are facing a lot of the bullshit, are the quote unquote legal organizations, above ground organizations, uh, which are constantly harassed legally and politically, etc., etc. Et so, um, but yeah, the, there's not much more to say on them. And sadly, there's not much reading that you can do in English. The last extensive book written on them was written like 1974 or something. Um, so that sucks. Hmm. Yeah, um, there's a see. question for Brother Hakim. Yes. Uh, do you have any book recommendations on Islam and Marxism? Much love from Argentina. Love the podcast. Um, um, yeah, there are some, but they're not very good. Um, 
I actually have a list. Hold up, hold up. I'll just, I'll, I'll bust out the list. Um, one sec, one sec. There it is. Okay. Um, yes, there is. Uh, there's a Talghani who's a Persian. Um, he was a uh, Mullah, I think. Uh, and he wrote Islam and Ownership, which was decent. It's on, on, on property. Uh, Tan Malaka wrote Communism and Pan-Islamism, which is something that you can check out. There's a short article by Haji Misbah, which is an Indonesian um, uh, imam, if I remember right. He wrote Islamism and Communism. The person who's act most actively trying to do something new in the sphere is uh, Muhammad al uh who is also Indonesian, I believe. Um, if you write his name, uh, you'll, you'll find it. Uh, his name in English is spelled Muhammad, like M-U-H-A-M-M-A. D and El Faydal is A L uh, dash F A Y Y A D L. Um, uh, otherwise, um, Gaddafi's Green Book is decent. Um, it has some some relevant things. Uh, there is um, uh, a book by Khalifa Abdul Hakim um, as well. It's called Islam and Communism, if I remember, but it's like so so. Um, the I think currently the, this is a tradition that doesn't exist, um, but uh, inshallah in the future it will kind of coalesce. I'm currently working on a, on a book on the topic, but uh, uh, progress is slow because I have a, a, a day job that sadly doesn't allow me much, too much free time. Uh, but I do hope to finish it over the next couple of years, um, and you guys will be the first to know about it. So Nice. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Then we have Grace with ten dollars. Thank you so much, Grace. She literally, <laughs> it's written Grace. And you, Grace, you made me cough. Grace, uh, much love for the podcast. Can you boys create a dating app for leftists? It would remove a lot of hassle trying to find a revolutionary fuck buddy slash partner oh, in conservative state countries. Lol. Grace, that is the commodification of love and relationships, which turns the human based inter. Search for connection into yet another market uh, solution. We do not agree with this, Grace. But we should, more uh, importantly, yep. it's also a great way. It's a one-stop shop for feds to come and, and find your picture and where you live. There so, we go. Let the, probably not the best idea to have a, a database of, of all the local communists and stuff. And if, if, if I was a right-wing uh, rapist, uh, like I, th that's what I would use. True. You get catfished by <laughs> a bunch of chuds. Yeah, you don't need that. Yeah, yeah. No, though, though she probably made that as a joke. It's a, it's a cute joke. Mm. It would be nice to have a very safe sort of uh, resource which allows you to find similarly mm. minded people yeah. with which you can potentially form a family or a relationship with. Mm. It, it would be really cool because we all know how many dates we had to go through with. Uh, with quote unquote a like I don't know about you guys, but to me it's more annoying when they they say they're apolitical or they don't <laughs> have a fucking ideology <laughs> than uh, than when they're like straight up conservatives or straight up liberals or whatever or God forbid fascists etc cetera, etc. Cetera. But at least they're you know they they understand that that they live in an in a political world in an ideologically driven world and at least they have an opinion on something. The worst are are the ones who feel like, who with their snobby uptight little uh, squeaky voices say that uh, politics is for, for idiots and they're not interested in that. They'd much rather go, I don't know, hiking and um, uh, watching uh, Teletubbies. I don't know what the fuck gay political people do. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say about that? Um, yeah, actually, no, I, I don't have much much to add. Uh Somebody wrote something else. Um, I think a bunch of that, questions wish, just like, disappeared. The stupid chat. Yeah, it's like. so stupid. It's such a bad, stupid fucking. I'm system. following them. Don't worry. We have Paulin asked. I'm only here to simp over Hakim. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you, Aren't we all? JT, should we feel? Should we? Should we? Shouldn't we feel offended by this? <laughs> I'm I mean, I, 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 I we, uh, me and we have uh, have uh, have partners. Uh, we have two partners. We have our own partners, and then Hakim. He, he's like yeah, exactly right. You're like in a poly relationship where we share him. You know, we fly him over to each other's countries all the time. Like, who, who's gonna have Hakim this month? And JT is like, oh, come on, I need him. Uh, I've been feeling sub with my bussy, my bussy asking for some Hakim. Okay, I'm over there. <laughs> uh, exactly right. Sorry, uh, you know, we I have, have we have a out. person pr probably from the Scandinavian uh, part of the world uh, whose name is Andor Firgi Johan. Nice. Uh, thank no, you so nice. much for your uh, for your donation, Andorfijon. Andorfijon. Okay, and Andor Andorfijon. Okay, I'll stop. Uh, what is you guys' favorite gym movement? 
<laughs> a gym movement probably like a thing to do in the gym, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. why is it why is it a bent over dumb, dumb, dumbbell roll? <laughs> uh, no, just kidding. Thank you for all the content. No, thank you so much for your support. Um, uh, the I, I I I love dumbbells actually. I absolutely love mm, dumbbells. Likewise. But I love the rowing machine. The shit mm. is that what it's called? The shit yeah. that you yeah. pull towards your chest and you go back. It works like all the for my body, all the weakest parts of my body, and mm. it helps bulk a bit. So that's I like it. And it's it's like it's difficult to to mess up because it makes you put your body in the specific way you use your uh, you you need to in order to get the maximum amount of uh, the exercise with it. You guys I think the most satisfying one for me is probably the deadlift. Um, of course. Because it's one that you can, <laughs> I mean, if you're not paying attention, you can really screw up your back. So if it forces you to, you know, engage with the lift, be careful, go through your checklist, make sure you're doing it right. And then you feel accomplished if, after you do it. Like once you, if you do a new uh, personal best on there, it, it you know, feels good. <laughs> it's an impressive lift. There's a little vein pop up on, on, on your forehead. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> I knew it. Classic. Let me blow your mind, uh, JT. Hex bar. That's all. That's Ooh. get it. Get a hex bar, or go to a gym that has a fucking hex bar. You are gonna. You're gonna love it. Um, you're not gonna have the same risk for injury. It's the best fucking thing to happen to. To absolutely. So, mm. Doctor Hakim um, has spoken. Get yourself a hex bar. Protect your back. Yes. Yes. Um, personally, this is this will probably surprise people. I mean, un this probably won't be surprising to people. My favorite exercises are actually calisthenics. I love doing uh, like body workouts, mm. um, lifting, and you know, uh, I like free weights and stuff is very good as well. Uh, but my personal taste, if you can even call it that, um, is uh, mostly calisthenic. I don't know why, but my joints are very prone to not slippage, but like I I've never injured myself horribly, but it there. Like with every like long extended period duration, like gymming duration, I feel like I'm about to injure myself, and uh, that's been always with machines and free weights and shit. But when it comes to calisthenics or free body movements, um, that's the only time where I feel like a whole fucking human being. It doesn't feel like one part of me is gonna uh, <laughs> like snap. Um, so that's why. Uh, <laughs> that's that's my uh, my my personal thing. Um, but yeah, somebody said a fastest workout today. Did you exactly right? Um, the, the guy said that, and he's, he's my, my favorite workout right. is uh, uh, my my right wing uh, girlfriend, and I'm not talking about my real partner. Ah, my right <laughs> hand, yeah, that's, no, I don't know about you guys, but my right bicep is much more swole than my left mm. one. That's all I'm gonna say. You have the the Coomer look. <laughs> the Coomer look. Of yeah. Actually, I need. I, I'm gonna go get an, a painfully expensive haircut tomorrow mm. because I love my barber too much. But mm. he's been raising prices like crazy. But I'm a loyal bitch and I keep going back to him. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I'm. Because uh, why am I saying the barber shit? Because I do look kind of like a Coomer right now. My 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 beard is all over the place. I ate right before the the podcast so probably there's food stuck in it's fucking rice and fucking uh uh kebab so you yeah. have to be wearing the the wife beater too i'm not wearing the white beater, but i am wearing a plain white t-shirt so i'm kind of hey. likewise and I'm, I'm literally in my underwear right now uh one of my thingies is popping out let me oh, like nice. back in. Yes. so mm -hmm. uh yeah, i'm a proper kumar look right now but yeah. i'm clean i showered two hours ago so don't worry about mm -hmm. that uh, enough about uh, me beating wives, uh, wife beaters. Uh, <laughs> Love in the middle of the robotic age came in with a whopping $5. Thank you so much. Greetings from Florida. I'm already hey. afraid of you. How should communists prepare for an economic collapse of the U.S. and greater imperial core? Uh, with arms. Uh, with, <laughs> yes, and, and with creating a system, if you are privileged enough to, to have land, uh, mm -hmm. where you can feed and house yourself even mm -hmm. when every trade route uh, collapses, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But honestly, whenever anybody like straight up answers this question, which I kind of did, it feels mm -hmm. extremely LARPy because yeah. we do not know in the way in which a society, whatever society it is, collapses mm -hmm. before it actually collapses. And you yeah. might be missing things that you never even thought of that you're going to miss. And you might, funny enough, have an abundance of things that you thought you were going to uh, you were going to miss, so you over prepped for. Prepping is not necessarily bad. It just uh, don't think when you prep that you're gonna have thought of everything because you will not. Yeah. You, you're, nobody's no that smart. Like that. 
not only that, but also uh, like it might happen over like a few days. Like it could be an incredibly sudden collapse, or it could be happen. It could happen over a few months or years. Um, and as a result, there would have been at least some form of organizations that spring up, and then the, the class struggle will, will will play its role in that. Um, and who knows? It might be a 1905 situation. It might be a 1917 situation. Mm. Um, so uh, yeah, it's always just good to be prepared um, with the theory, uh, with the arms, and with the organization. So go out there and. Uh, and uh, you know, and also basic fucking skills. Everybody should know how to. This is just life advice. Everybody should, should know how to fucking uh, like uh, sew clothes or like fix a, a you, know, you know I don't know what the fucking term is in English, but you know what I mean. Uh, everybody should know how to grow basic food. E- everybody should know basic uh, agriculture. It's not fucking rocket science. You just put shit in the ground and it grows. It's really... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a little more to it, but it's not that difficult. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah, not wasted time basic... either. Like even even yeah. if there is no never is any collapse. I mean, you've you've learned a useful skill. You can you know go out to your garden and pick vegetables and stuff that you can have with your meals, and it's that's going to save yeah. you money in the long run. It's healthier than going yeah. to McDonald's and things like that. It's yeah. it, you're improving yourself, you know, regardless of what comes next. Learn basic mind first blowing. aid. Having skills good. Super yeah. mind yes. blowing. <laughs> yeah. Learn basic first aid. I will repeat a third time. Learn basic first aid. <laughs> Fucking hell. Jesus, because the amount of people who don't know how to do chest compression and shit is, is ridiculous. Please, please. Fucking hell. You can they save want us life. to do their job. You see these doctor parasites. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. learns first aid and then why we pay your salary with our taxes. Ah, doctor, There's... thank you. Ah, I'm yeah, yeah. literally playing. Hey, the invoice comes either way, baby. <laughs> the invoice <laughs> comes either way. <laughs> I say that as I'm fucking... Jesus Christ. Um... Oh man, yeah, no, uh, I'm paid fucking dog shit. Uh, and by the way, I recently <laughs> took a pay cut. So <laughs> because I, I changed jobs, right? Uh, <laughs> fuck me. It's the worst thing. It's like, oh, you're going to a bigger place in a bigger hospital with more involved work. By the way, you're going to be paid less. Get fucked. Um, <laughs> oh, that's oh, nice. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, they really, they really try to fuck you. Um, I, I, so obviously I thought Hakeem was going to say everybody should learn how to grow a basic beard. Yes, that too. Um, you never know when you might need, you never know when you might need to pull a linen and change your face. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, <laughs> so but don't actually, overdo it because everybody tells me I look 35 because of my <laughs> fucking beard. And I don't know if I'm supposed I, I, to take it as a compliment because I look wise and sophisticated, mm. or uh, I should put on more sunscreen. But no, I've, unironically, I have like n- not a single wrinkle on my face. And if I mm. would shave, I would look 12. But I don't know how the beard, the, the, usually a beard gives you five years, it gives 25 yeah. years to me. So I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I completely uh, get it. Oh man. But yeah, I, I have the exact same problem. Um, I remember uh, in my previous workplace, there was a guy who was, uh, he was almost in his third, like he was getting close to 30 years old and, uh, he thought we were the same age. So he went out of his way to try to befriend me. Uh, and then we chilled and everything. He's a super chill guy. Uh, and we're friends now. But, um, later on, uh, he had, like I mentioned my, my real age. He's like, what, what the fuck? You're that young. Uh, I was like, what do you mean that young? And he was like, I thought you were like 34 or something. I was like, motherfucker, what? <laughs> I remember, no, he said like 28 or 29 or something. Um, but yeah, uh, I, and that was just oh. because I, I had too much beard for that. Imagine day. being uh, so 29. I'm, what a disaster. Yeah, JT, I don't know. How do your rickety old bones <laughs> <Yeah>. fucking, <laughs> do your joints creak? <laughs> yeah, I have to grunt when I get up from the couch, yeah. <laughs> hey, dude, I do that now, so it's not a problem. Fucking hell. Um, I did it in front of a patient once, and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I do like it's like half a meme, but also it feels better to to grunt when you go up or yeah. to like do a stupid noise. Um, yeah, and the old guy was like, "Hey, it looks like you need to be in the seat more than I do." And I was like, "Fuck <laughs> off, <laughs> okay, don't talk to your doctor like this." <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I was gonna ask you boys something actually before we get to the questions, because um, we both mentioned the the, the white t shirt thing. Uh, JT, do you have a undershirt culture in the U.S.? Is that a thing? <sighs> Yeah, I mean, depends on what you wear. Like, you've got the the people who go to office jobs who will wear a button-down shirt, and a lot of people will wear, an, like, a white undershirt or, you know, whatever color uh, underneath their button-down mm. to prevent, like, sweat stains and stuff. Um, mm. But I wouldn't say it's, like, a culture, really. I mean, people yeah, will just wear an undershirt as a, as a T-shirt, uh, you know, just a typical white T-shirt. I'll do that a lot, usually just around the house. But, no, I, I very rarely put on an undershirt beneath the shirt that I'm going to wear. All right, very interesting. But that's just me. Um, Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Chat, sound off if you wear undershirts. Fuck that. I don't wear an undershirt either. I don't care no? how much I fucking sweat. The aesthetic of the undershirt being visible underneath your collar, yeah. it, it, it 
literally infuriates me. I, I'm like, oh my <laughs> god, like it, it it bugs me so hard. It does Dude, not I, look I, good. I, 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 it's the first unless thing it's I a put black shirt. Thing. It's unless it's a black shirt with a black t-shirt underneath because mm. the black melts together. Then okay, yeah. it's it's tolerable. Oh but, no, oh I my god, if it color match, yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, but but okay, you, you you're wearing a white shirt with a yeah. white t-shirt underneath. That's that's acceptable. That's genuinely acceptable. But a a shirt which is any other color and you put a different color t-shirt underneath <laughs> i don't care how much you sweat my friend that is the risk you must take to be a equal member of society brother you cannot <laughs> do this to my fucking eyes uh, <laughs> just unbutton the shirt then and wear an unbuttoned mm-hmm. open shirt you know with all the buttons unbuttoned and you have a cool t-shirt underneath yes you look like you're 16 and you uh, say the n-word on xbox live but still <laughs> at least it's something but if you if you ah for example, an, I don't know, an orange shirt with a white fucking thing popping under the color collar. Oh my god, that's 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 like inhumane, man. That's for the Hague. <laughs> Look, I don't know. It's something with being ethnic. I think I don't know what to tell you. I, I think the, the the darker you go, the more there, the stronger the the undershirt culture is. <laughs> I think. Um, but yeah, like in, where I, where I'm from, it's absolutely like uh, the first thing you do. You get up in the morning, you you change your fanile, we call it, and in, in my dialect. So um, I have like fifty of them, right? Yeah, it's dude. Like I have like yeah, yeah, I think I have like two dozen. Um, and I have like my underwear, one. socks, and you put the undershirt. That's like a yeah, on the same level as underwear and socks. That's cool. Okay, yeah, I'm not yeah, judging. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Just match it, match yeah. it. Have different yeah, colors. Yeah, yeah, no, it's always match, match them with all always... your different color shirts. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 no, 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 for sure. I always match my, and uh, it's it's also good because I have literally, I have four. My color palette is four colors. I wear white, gray, navy blue, and black. That's all. <laughs> Those are all. Uh, and, yeah, and same, by the, the gray, yeah, gray is the two shades. You have a, a lighter gray, but still not very light gray, and very dark gray. That's it. Um, <laughs> I've transitioned to all earth tones, basically, like the greens and the khakis and the browns and stuff like that. That's I don't know why. At some point, that just became my entire wardrobe. That and Hawaiian shirts for summer. Oh wow! All right, Um, the the jeans are strong. I I like it. You know, I I think uh, uh, what's it called? Hawaiian shirts are pretty cool. I think. Yeah, they're great for the heat. And uh, I like when I was younger, I was like, man, you guys look like idiots. These like that dads mm. walking around in Hawaiian shirts. But then I tried some on. I'm like, hmm, I'm going to buy all of these. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like every piece of clothing. If you can pull it off, you can wear a plastic bag over your head. Like yeah. if you can pull it off, it looks fucking phenomenal. Mm. If you cannot, like just uh, again, any yeah. other piece of clothing, it looks stupid. There's people literally yeah. in white wife beaters that look fucking hot as fuck, you know, yeah. because they can pull it off. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, it's not just the article. It's how the article looks with the other articles you have on you and then just with the vibe you give off. And it needs to match. If it doesn't match, you look like you're trying hard and that's the biggest sin you can ever commit uh, based on Italian fashion mentality. No, I don't fucking know. <laughs> there was a word for it. There was a word for it. For, literally for trying too hard. It's like the worst, worst sin you can commit in fashion or whatever. But before before they start disappearing on my screen right yeah, yeah, now, no. I, uh, let's just go through a few. There's a lovely person who came in with five bucks with a Korean name. I'm sorry, I cannot read. Have you all considered inviting socialism for all? I think I follow them on Twitter. They're pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, we're always open to guests, sense suggestions, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. They're in our um, super, super secret communist organizing uh, Discord, too. As well, awesome. Then that increases the chances even more exponentially. Lovely. Um, okay, now this jumped away from me. Uh, one moment. The chat just moved. While you're searching, I yeah, saw no. one easy question. Uh, am I still friends with Real Life Lore? Yes. He uh, came over the other day. We played some Magic, uh, and he won oh, with his nice. stupid uh, sea monster deck, which we were all making fun of because it's too slow, and he, he beat us all, of course. Oh, well. I'm glad that's so cute. I think that's so cute that you guys hang out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were, we've been okay. friends for for years, long before either of us started doing YouTube, uh, and it just so happened that we both ended up having successful channels. That's phenomenal. Mm. Nice, man. Uh, I can, inshallah, one day we'll be able to uh, like uh, you go think and I will be able to meet up with you as well, and then we can just do shit together. Absolutely, uh, come on down. Uh, that'll be. Uh... No, you come down, motherfucker. Yeah, I guess uh... you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, yeah, we'll I'm all each we'll visit each other's respective, and we'll we'll make it. We'll do uh, the the program specials. I so fu- I cannot wait to do that shit. That's gonna Michelle, be fun. I cannot wait. Um, and, but more more of the the super chats because they're gonna disappear. Mishka de Caro, some already disappeared. Apologies to those for mm-hmm. which it did. 
even though I'm like super backtracked in it, uh, I tried. Uh, Mishka De Caro came in with a currency that's called ARS 1000. Thank you so much. 1000 sounds like a lot. Feel free to ignore this message. Haha, you have failed. We shall not ignore <laughs> it. Uh, the, uh, this Friday will be my birthday. Can I detour you and ask to pronounce my name the right way? In oh, Cyrillic, boy. it is Mishka. Yes, it's Mishka. Fuck yeah, I already did. Best way to uh, uh, best wishes from another Argentinian. Uh, ah, so you're from one of our people over in the in the great uh, greatest continent on earth, in my opinion, South America. Uh, stay strong, my brothers. Next year elections are going to be harsh. Absolutely. Mm. Good luck to you guys as elections because you have you have a very interesting year behind you and a very interesting year coming. But yes, let's all say Mishka. Mishka as a K. Bravo, bravo, very good. You see, the American did it well. Now the the Iraqi, <laughs> go. Uh, oh, it's Mish Mishka, no? Bravo, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, we have some linguists yeah. up in up in this yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, up in this podcast, baby. Then we go to Combla Ombla. Thoughts on the pencil man and the current state of Peru. I haven't been keeping up personally, but I would be oh, interested right. to hear your opinion on Castillo. Did they call him Castillo. the pencil man? Yeah, he had Castillo. a. a he had a big uh, pencil at a bunch of the rallies. I think that's their symbol for some one of their education things. Um, oh, okay, nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't kept up with it all that much. I think there was more excitement for him early on, um, but he's done some kind of sock demish stuff that has disappointed people. Uh, I don't want to say more than I know. That's about the extent of what I've heard. Same. I have no idea. Don't ask me anything about South America. Uh, the episode we have currently released uh, with Ben Norton is really good, and there we mm. actually call a person that's from that part of the world and lives there and actually talks about it. Mm. It's kind of like the whole point of – thank you for the question, though, but the whole point of our podcast being international is because we do not really – like people talking about places uh, that they don't know too much about and even though we try to answer as many questions as possible the previous one about the philippines about peru about this and that uh, out of respect to you guys usually our principle is uh, you know we uh, ask people who are on the ground and there's plenty of communists from there who can better answer your question etc yeah. etc uh tgth uh, coming in with 750 isk I will be starting my bachelor thesis soon. Can you give me any recommendations as a topic? Man, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't think we can, no. Best of yeah, luck. we cannot. Think... Thank you. Good, good luck, my friend. Um, <laughs> we have St. I mean, what the fuck am I supposed to say? St. Brush coming in with $20. Thank you so much. What is your opinion on how Marxists should conduct themselves online and in other public spaces? Should we dissuade things like trolling? Uh, just don't be a dweeb. That's that's about yeah. it. That comes down to every, yeah. you know, different type of group online. Like, just present yourself well. Don't be overly antagonistic to people who are asking genuine questions. Um, don't talk mm. down to people. <clears throat> you know that sort of thing. Don't use racial slurs for God's sake. Yes. Um, God's just sake. just be a decent human being online. Remember that you're talking to another human on the other end. Yeah. Um, and try to Imagine try to them in front of you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, don't make your whole personality, oh my God, I'm the communist in this group of friends. Yeah. That's the only thing I'm constantly going to be talking about. Trust me, I was that guy for a very long time. Some people really liked it and some even turned, but a lot of people were massively dissuaded from it and like wouldn't even hang out because, okay, this guy's going to have like four vodkas and he's going to try to make me sing the fucking international in the middle of a club where techno is playing. So, <laughs> so yeah, don't, so, don't, like you are... A thousand things, not just uh, a communist. Yeah. Yes, being the communist is the most important thing. Brainwashing, oh, we're a cult. Duh, 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 duh. I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, but is it is extremely important. I'm not saying it isn't. But that's the when you're talking to people who are not communists or anarchists or whatever, you're gonna really push them away. That's the only thing you get to offer. Like get a personality, touch grass, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Exactly right. Beautifully put. <laughs> then we go to. <laughs> can I go to the next one? Go yeah, for it. Go ahead. Thank you, gentlemen. We got to render with two Australian. The, what, what did I actually say? The word two dollars from the country that doesn't exist. Aussie oh, okay. that doesn't exist. A socialist <laughs> from a non-existent place. Back mm -hmm. again. Love you guys. Oh my God, is that dude? Go back to the void of non-existence, which spawns <laughs> uh, spiders the size of my foot. 
Uh, but no, thank you. Jokes aside, uh, lovely. Thank you so much. Uh, Jay Bird coming in with five. Are there any decent books on criminology, criminal justice in socialist countries that won't make my brain hurt? Uh, uh, look up. We'll... Um, yeah, go. Look up. So I was going to say, look up Ismail uh, Badiou, B A D I O U, um, on the ar archive.com. He has scanned many Soviet works. I think there's two or three Soviet books on criminology, uh, criminology that have been translated to English. So go take a look there. Um, I had a wild experience with, with, with this specific thing. Uh, my girlfriend used to live in this flat that had a whole set, a whole book section, uh, mm -hmm. literally uh, like covered by a piece of cloth and everything else she could touch, but she needed to promise that she's never going to touch it. And before she was going to move out, uh, we were like, fuck it, we've been here for so long and we well, let's check out what's behind the books. They can't do anything to us now. Turns mm -hmm. out like some big shot communist used to live there, a lawyer and afterwards mm -hmm. a judge. And we found so many documents of like uh, court proceedings uh, <laughs> inside of this specific socialist Balkan state. Uh, and it was absolutely incredible reading through it. And one of the things that really like uh, stayed in my mind and uh, when from everything that I went through is that there was a case of like a group of 10 people who were roaming the country, like uh, robbing, uh, raping, doing all kind of fucked up shit, men and women uh, mm. were in the group. Uh, and uh, they, when they did an analysis, they didn't only prosecute, but their job was to uh, analyze their lives and find the material reason for why their lives turned out the way they had so that they can adjust policy to uh, cri criminal experiences, which obviously we will, you will never see in a neoliberal society. Uh, but then their conclusion was semi-reactionary, if I may say so <laughs> myself, because it was like, uh, it was uh, very workerist, if I could call it that. Mm -hmm. It was like the main thing between all 10 of them is that they come from families in which work was not respected and most of their parents were always out of work and they themselves uh, were not adequately helped by the state to get into jobs that they would feel um, not only appreciated in, but jobs that would they would feel fulfilled in. Uh, and that's why they all quit their jobs and a year later they started this gang and they started roaming and killing people and robbing people, et cetera, et cetera. So ba the, the conclusion in the end would like bolded up letters, basically, even though bolded up didn't exist back then, but it was uh, um, laziness and lack of work uh, creates monsters, basically, uh, which uh, to an extent I, I agree with, but to, to an extent it's also uh, kind of counterintuitive to, to uh, long-term communist ideals because, yeah, uh, by the destruction of hierarchy and then we, we know this. Uh, but yeah, uh, the reason why I went on a rant related to the question, the, the, the way it looked was very different to other like court case documents I went through because they had a whole section on which it was the jo job of the judge and different uh, police officers to interview everybody and to figure out an explanation that would be for further sent to the party on why this has happened. And this wasn't only in this case, which obviously seems to be a very big case, uh, but in other cases as well, like divorces, et cetera, et cetera, they would define why did this divorce happen, blah, blah, blah. And uh, then that would be used to adopt uh, the legal system. But yeah, uh, we go next to St. Guillotine, lovely name with five bucks off topic, but thoughts on the party of communism USA, which is not the CPUSA. Do you guys know anything about that? No, there are too many like fragmentary groups to keep okay. up with. Um, so I, the only ones I really know anything about are CPUSA, DSA, and PSL. Uh, that's that's about it. Um, it was... What about PCL, CPPUA? <laughs> uh, yes, how could I forget? Ah, the People's absolutely. Liberation Front of Judea and the Judean People's Front. <laughs> what the fuck? That's <laughs> <Yeah>. a little <laughs> joke. <laughs> Oh, man. My my favorite my favorite is the pee pee poo poo. Okay, now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pee pee poo poo liberation front. <laughs> All oh, pee pees and all poops shall be freed. You know, it, um, it really is. My favorite is African ones because they're always so generically. You know, it's like oh, the People's Liberation Front versus the uh, Democratic <laughs> Liberation <laughs> of the People. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always so you know like. Uh, 
Um, it's a it's a classic. Like when the when the Yugoslav communists stepped away from uh, the so-called Stalin line, they said uh, they did, you know they needed to change their name and they just like switched mm. the the fucking like things around from you know the Communist Party of Yugoslavia to the League of Communists of Yugoslavia. Oh my God, so mm. so deep, so deep. Uh, Maybe, like, comes... We've had on, sorry, on, we've like, had a, another person say that someone is quiet. Who who specifically is quiet? And we can turn up our mm. our volume individually. Just let us know in, in the chat. <laughs> Can't turn on. Oh, uh, there's some guy. Sorry. Uh, by the way, I, I'm speaking close to the mic now, so people um uh can in case it's made us too quiet. Uh, there's some dude in the chat who's like, oh, Hakeem thinks that Biden will like bring peace to Iraq or some bullshit. I don't know what the fuck this guy's on about. Um. <laughs> But uh, yeah, go touch grass and actually engage with my content if you want to learn what I w w what I believe. Um, but uh, yeah, how about you Biden on this dick? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Yes, homeboy, that um, way. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, uh, and nope says Hakeem, please say hi. Hi, there you go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, mainly Hakeem and JT are quiet. Okay, let me turn mine up just a smidge. Okay. Or maybe I'm too loud yeah. and I should move away from the mic. That's okay, there we go. Mine's up a little bit, so let me know if it's too loud, but hopefully that should solve it. Yeah. Um, all right, great. I'm now you can... Uh, I'm gonna, my name's Dees. How, <laughs> how do people hear that? <laughs> Does that sound fine? Does that sound all right? Um, all right. But yeah. Um, yes, more of the super chats, please. Uh, so I can uh, see render more. with five fake dollars. Uh, many you, see, you guys are really trying to fuck me up with this one. Many people on the left are neurodivergent. Many people I talk to online in socialist circles at least have ADHD. Doctor Hakim, is there any correlation between being? I think if you see this stuff very commonly in the West. I think there's a huge overdiagnosis of. Um, mm. Uh, what's it called of of uh, people as neurodivergent or ADD or ADHD or this and that and that um, and uh, I think when you look uh, when it comes to health for most things everybody exists on a spectrum no matter what it is right um, and uh, just because you are a little bit more on the spectrum than somebody else doesn't mean that you're unhealthy or you're mentally ill or you need a diagnosis the vast majority of people historically ha may have had a diagnosis if we apply the actual um, like uh, diagnostic criteria but they can live entirely normal fulfilling lives without any issues um, if they were never diagnosed so I think this this stuff is uh, um, really overstated that's number one number two in my personal experience I haven't noticed this I think this is fundamentally and and American thing more even more so than just a Western thing. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, A H comes in with twenty bucks. J T R U N real life floors. Oh, okay, that we yeah, got answered down that one. to the yeah. previous ones. Lovely. Uh, then we have okay. Now it moved again. Then we have one moment. Jesse Vajalian, uh, take my money and listen on YouTube. Oi, Suri, ya, Mahtava, Neu Vostililito. I probably butchered that. Thanks from Finland. I love you, JT, Hakim, and Yugopnik. Thank oh, you. Shucks. We should listen to that song. Thank you very I'll, much. Put it, I'll put it down in our Discord so we don't forget it. Uh, Jam um, Life. Um, yeah, sorry, well, sorry to cut you off. Sorry. Uh, Samuel Luna said, Can you guys wish me a happy birthday? I'd really appreciate it. So, happy birthday, Samuel Luna. Uh, I hope you have a lovely day. I hope you have a great time with your family, all that kind of stuff. Enjoy the cake, enjoy the ice cream, and whatever else you do. Um, yes, happy yeah, birthday. Have a one. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, happy birthday. Divan dan, divan dan. <laughs> yeah, something I found very funny. Um, in the in Arabic, whenever you sing happy birthday, uh, you, you, you sing it in the uh, Egyptian dialect. I don't know why it huh. just is that way. It's it's weird. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yes, happy birthday. I'm sorry. Uh, the, um, you got think you're talking. You're mentioning the other super chat. Yeah, I'm Jam Life on what books we should recommend about contentious moments, informer, socialist, political history, like the Berlin oh, Wall, the Cult Revolt, the Hungarian Revolution. I mean, these are such huge topics. There's so many different books. DM me. <laughs> <laughs> Hakeem has a list for everything. 
Yeah. Blair, uh, by the way, you know, yep. on, on, the, on the actual, on the communism subreddit of all places, actually, if you look up these questions, there are people who have really good recommendations. Um, so do that first if you'd like. Um, the master post that is on the communism subreddit uh, has books on all of those things. Um, so you can do that. Um, but otherwise, if you want more in-depth stuff, then DM me and I'll, I'll help you out. Reddit. <laughs> 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 except for r slash the d program blessed place yeah boy yeah boy claire comes in with five dollars thank you so much speaking of south american elections thoughts on the petro win we already touched on it uh thank you for the dono the poltism hey my man i fucking love this guy uh, obligatory edition, uh, Ugopnik hangover fund edition. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, hosting a W finally got my degree, triple bachelor's of science and wow. 10 minors. Oh my God. Congrats. Ten minors. Bravo. <laughs> I have, I've never heard of anyone like three bachelors. I, I have two and that touched that fucking blew my brain out. You have <laughs> three and 10 minors. Wow. I am. Congratulations. Uh, well done. Least to say impressed. Bravo. Mm. Unless you're joking with us, because 10 minors. Oh my god. Like, <laughs> how is that? That is wild. Okay. Bravo. No, that, that's a, like a man of, of uh, many talents. Many talents. Uh, Black Rain 707. I'm doing this accent until the end of the podcast. No, you're not. You're stopping right now. We'll go down to zero <laughs> concurrent viewers. So, <laughs> Black Rain says, How do okay, y'all yeah. feel about. Okay, I'll stop now. How do y'all <laughs> feel about small business owners? I work for a guy with less than 20 full time positions, but I still feel like we're getting screwed over in salary. The boss treats people well, uh, but I still. And then I guess it ran out, but you probably still feel shitty at work i mean your relation it's all about class relations your relations to him are that of the proletariat to the bourgeois he is your exploiter who cannot ever give you the full value of your labor because he needs to make a profit he himself is the capitalist and is has positioned himself in the hierarchy the way he is in his case he's a petite petite bourgeois petite capitalist call it whatever you want uh, and in the long run, he will be eaten by much larger capitalists. So an argument can be made, which is not the most mainstream argument, that even the interests of the petite bourgeois are more in line in the modern time with the, that of the proletariat because their class will eventually get annihilated by large capitalists until literally only a few large capitalists own absolutely everything around us and we're living in a rentier fucking stupid ass society but it's the marxists are not uh, like liberals we do not make things about uh quote unquote morality etc etc he is occupying his position in hierarchy in which he is that is that an exploitative position in the hierarchy as compared to you yes it is is he probably getting ripped off by somebody bigger from who he's buying the products in which he's then re uh through your labor like redefining to sell to the final person yes probably but the, him being in, in that hierarchical position is not a moral question it's a material question which is answered by your relation to him. So he's not a bad guy. He's he's the bourgeois. We're not. This is not fucking Toy Story when there's we're like uh, there's a specific bad guy and a specific good guy. These are class relations which we are trying to destroy or alter as extremely as possible in order to alleviate uh, said exploitation. And not only that, but five hundred other things that uh, I, I I don't want to bore people with. Mm, yeah, but very, very beautifully put. Very concise answer. Um, no, I have nothing to add. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing is, somebody said something that I found funny, which is a. Uh, um, hold on, what was it? Uh -huh. Yeah, he said, uh, "Can the uh, can the uh, can the uh, petit bourgeois be tall, or are they destined to be petite?" <laughs> 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 I don't know why that tickled me. <laughs> but yeah. Um, all right. I think there's oh. a few more that we missed, right? Yes. At at, at oh man, attic USCB. What the fuck are you guys doing with these names? Thank you so much for five dollars, JT and Hakim. Can you make the episode where you ask JT a bunch of questions on American culture that foreigners don't understand about the U.S. All written in caps lock. I think he's being semi-ironic. <laughs> they they continued later on in another comment asking if we could make it a recurring uh, episode. <laughs> oh, okay, because I was just gonna say we already did that once, but yeah, yeah. I don't mind. Um, it was it fun. It can be a I'm once, sure can... once yeah. in a while thing. Why not? Uh, yeah. Whenever we, we add things to a list and be like, what the fuck, JT, explain. <laughs> You're the representative for your people. 
Yeah, when you come visit, I'm sure we could just record us driving around and you pointing at things and saying, what is this? Why? <laughs> oh my god, I cannot wait. I can't wait to go into an American grocery store and be like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? Why do you need 16 gallons of orange juice? How do you even take this home? <laughs> I have 130 pizza rolls in my in my freezer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know if you're lying or not. I'm That's not lying. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Ow! Oh my God! What, okay, what is a pizza roll? It's an abomination against Italian cuisine. I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So it's a little. Okay. You know what a hot pocket is? <laughs> I think so. Okay. I don't know. So it's like a thing. <laughs> it's like a rolled up. It's like a mini calzone, basically. And a pizza okay. roll is like a much minier version of that. So it's like uh-huh. the size of. Um, Looking around for an analogy, You're I don't know, good. maybe maybe a sixth or an eighth the, the size of a hot pocket, and you just put like twelve okay. of them on a plate. You toss them in the microwave, and then you uh, eat them and, and, and burn your mouth. <laughs> okay, so what what the fuck are pizza tots? I think that's what it's called, pizza tots. Uh, pizza rolls. That's Totino's pizza rolls. That's what that is. I've never oh, heard of a pizza okay. tot. Okay, then it's Totino's. That's that's the term I've heard. Um... Okay, yeah, and then that is that is that what you're just talking about? Is that the thing you just mentioned? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. 130 okay, of those come right. in the large family size of Totino's pizza rolls. <laughs> okay, fucking family, dude. But that ain't for my family. That's that's just for me. I tell you what. For me. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you do you? And that's for uh, breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Do you like eat them on their own? Is there supposed to be like a dip? What the, what the fuck? How do, how is one meant to ingest this? You're supposed to uh, eat like a couple dozen of those with you know three or four Mountain Dews, but uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> no, they're they're meant to be eaten <laughs> on their own. They're just like a little snack. Okay, you know I would have believed you if you said that. Shit. I would have believed. You. <laughs> um, uh, okay, and somebody wrote pizza bagel as well in the thing in the in the chat. What is a pizza bagel? It's basically the same thing, except instead of being enclosed in a pocket, it's like a tiny little miniature bagel with fake cheese and uh, pepperoni cubes on it. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm not gonna. This is the food of the of the of the people in the U.S. I'm assuming it's this and fucking pop tarts. You know what? To this day, I don't know. What, I've seen pictures of pop tarts, but it just looks. It's like this radioactive pink color. Is it candy? Is it savory? Is it what the fuck is it's, it? It's sweet. So a pop tart uh-huh. is the base of the pop tart is a pastry, like a thin pastry, um, and then on the inside they'll have a flavoring, and then on the uh-huh. top often they'll have a frosting of the same flavoring. So like there's a cinnamon one that has like a cinnamon flavoring on the inside, and then a cinnamon crust on the top. Um, but they have strawberry. That's the one you saw, the the very pink one. Um, mm. Blueberry, all sorts of other uh, pop tarts. They have abominations like Oreo flavored, which if I see those in the store, sometimes I will I will cave and get the Oreo flavored pop tarts. But yeah, they are. Oh uh, my god, you <laughs> fucking they're animal! Not healthy. <laughs> oh lord, I thought you were gonna say I cave and I run away because I'm afraid of this thing <laughs> coming out, like the pop tart, yeah. tart tarts, pop tarts, oh, uh, rock and roll tarts coming out of the <laughs> actual package and attacking me. Nah, this dude buys them, man. Uh, you know what my respect do? to you went from 110% to 100%. <laughs> Fair like, enough. This is what we'll do. We're going to come to the US show, and then we're going to do a, a, a deprogram special where you go up Think and I just go into an American grocery store. First of all, the first part is that we go and we just look, point at shit and be like, what the fuck is this? And just, you, you have to explain. And then afterwards, <laughs> we're just going to go and grab random shit that we see, and we're going to do we're gonna taste test taste test all of it oh, and just yeah. be hor- horrified <laughs> by either how fatty, how calorie rich, or how sweet everything is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll pick out the best of American cuisine for you guys to taste. It's going to be great. Hold on. Claire Rodriguez says, just wait till Hakeem finds out Florida pharmacies sell liquor. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a feeling these, this isn't just Florida ones. Uh, I'm trying to think about in, in Texas, we have some weird laws, like you can't buy liquor on a Sunday um, or after or before a certain time. Um, our pharmacies, usually our grocery stores aren't allowed to sell liquor. They can sell wine. They can sell beer. And like hard seltzers and stuff like that, but usually the liquors have to be in a liquor store. I don't know about Florida. That is interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Wait, you know what? I buy liquor in a in a supermarket. Not usually. Not not in my experience. The fuck. So I have to go to a supermarket and I have to try to another place because <laughs> it's gonna be healthier for the people. But I'm gonna use like another seven hundred gallons of driving you guys as cars to go from the supermarket to the liquor store to get to the booze <laughs> and, and end up like poisoning everybody around me, at least with the, my, my booze and just poisoning with them myself. But okay. Uh, 
big brain logic. Why would you not just put it in the supermarket? Well, a little kid is going to confuse it for a watermelon. Like, you need an ID the size of Iowa to show to the fucking grumpy uh, Indian lady at the, at the checkout. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about the specific shout out to Maryland, uh, 70 year old Indian lady that every time asked me for the ID when I would go buy beers. And like, I would go every night at the exact same time. She would always ask me about my, <laughs> my fucking, like, don't you know me? I've been here for two fucking months now. No, she was lovely. She was lovely. She would do it because she's lonely and she needs to start up a conversation. When she oh. would look up the, at the ID card, she would ask me, how's your day? She would like haggle the ID card. So I have to stay and actually talk to her. She was a lovely woman. I'm just, uh, just getting PTSD. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I would just go to 7-Eleven. I bought my 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 shit from 7-Eleven. Super overpriced cigarettes and super over overpriced booze. But those very nice hot dogs. They have like these super cheap, nice little hot dogs. That was always a, a lovely experience with those disgusting sauces on top. It was, it was lovely. After a 12-hour <laughs> shift at work, that they're fucking perfect. I'm I'm glad to have, to say I have never had any of these experiences, but who knows? Maybe one day <laughs> when we go to the US, we'll see. <laughs> I don't think I'm brave enough to go to Florida though. So. Uh, um... We were gonna need like a, you know, <laughs> I remember like in in the in the late two thousands, um, there are these people who are like, ooh, you know, the dangerous seeking tourists, white 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 people don't want to come and feel like mm-hmm. you know, uh, like ooh, it's an adventure to come to Iraq or something, uh, and they would hire people right uh, to to like um, basically to go into different communities and no one would mess with you because you're clearly foreign, but you have a guy from the area or whatever, right, as like protection or whatnot. Um, I feel like I would need that equivalent, but for Florida. If that makes sense, <laughs> <It feels> like, <laughs> like they make a spell on me, and I'm not from around there, and they're gonna blow, they're gonna fucking I don't know feed me to their alligators. Oh yeah, we'll take you on a there. fan boat ride, and you can go meet some alligators. Jesus, a fucking what? A what now? Is that the, the <laughs> shit in Resident Evil Five awesome. that, that Chris and <laughs> and Cheva get on? Is that a fan boat? <laughs> it's a, it, a fan boat is a boat, and on the back there's a yeah. big old fan inside a cage, and it just blows you around. Yeah. All right, all right, have fun. That that sounds safe. That's <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I, I I don't know how that that part of the U.S. actually exists. You know, as far as I I'm like like sixty percent certain that Florida doesn't actually exist. It's just a you know, <laughs> it's a myth, a, a cultural, myth. yeah, <laughs> yeah, to to like scare kids or something. Like, oh, you know, if you don't eat your vegetables, we're gonna send you to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, all right, um, let's see. Uh... The South Southwest Asian experience is getting a nice poorly made pizza from a local street vendor after a long day of work with plastic cheese and ketchup. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, like, okay, maybe South East. Southwest Asian, like where we're at, yeah, pizza is actually not bad. I mean, they're okay. Uh, but yeah, well, I mean, we have things like Nahmajin and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's kind of the equivalent. Uh, kind of. But um, they slept. Like 11 o'clock, having like two uh, uh, of them with some tea and stuff. Very, very good. Um, do not tell Hakeem about what we do with Jello while nobody is looking, or that shrimp Jello was a thing during the fifties and sixties. Um, explain. Uh, <laughs> I don't even want to know what this person is referring to. I just eat Jello like a normal person. Um, but okay. did, did, they, did they say shrimp Jello? Shrimp Jello in the fifties and sixties. Yes. I have Jesus never heard Christ. of that. That sounds cockroach Jello. <laughs> sounds do, terrible. Do you know this, the, to me, this just sounds like uh, this is like a dark aspect of your culture that you're hiding from us. I, I don't believe that you don't know what this is. I believe that you're trying to. <laughs> I'm going to subject like you to the to the. Mechanism. I'm going to haze you with the Jello when you get here. <laughs> oh fuck! Hey, you know what? I, I, I'm a good sport about it. I would do it. Uh, I, I, whatever you have that you you know is a local delicacy. I mean, <laughs> America bar- barely has culture, so I don't know if you have local delicacies. But um. <laughs> we'll take you to the homophobic chicken. That's our that's our claim yeah, to fame so here. You know what? That that's something I can get down with. I'll go. I'll taste the homophobic chicken. And I'll see, like, hmm, maybe, maybe I shouldn't carry a pride flag. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. Let's see. What else? Um, because we missed a few uh, that came in right now. Oh, fuck! I have to scroll the, the, all the way up. Why don't they just have them on the side, man? Um, YouTube is a terrible Canadian platform. Conrad said, uh, "Hey, comrades, I'm just uh, wondering if you'd like to share what editing software you use because I would like to make my own videos for our movement. Um, I use Sony Vegas. I think um, JT uses Premiere, right? Yep, I use Premiere, um, but I use yeah. DaVinci Resolve uh, to color the footage because I shoot with the Blackmagic right. camera. But there yeah, Premiere, go. Premiere. I mean, if you, it's it's highway robbery if you uh, pay the subscription price. So if you have other yeah, means yeah. of acquiring Premiere, <clears throat> that would be the way to go. Another, 
I agree with that statement. Um, Ahmad Ishaq sent one dollar, but no uh, message. Thank you very much. Um, Dead Inside ninety seven said JT loved your recent episode uh, epi mm, on call centers, but I wish you focused a little bit more on the material conditions which force people to work these jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I would, definitely yeah. understand that position. Um, only so much I could fit in the video, and I did try to kind of hedge my language where I wanted to remind people that yes, these as scummy as the practice is of, of like these scammers, they are, you know, your fellow workers and they have to make a living too. Um, but the comments on that video were, were surprisingly vitriolic. Some of them towards, Mm -hmm. uh, scam callers. And like, I get it. You don't want to deal with scam callers and it sucks that they're out there trying to, you know, take the money of old people and stuff, but they're not the ones who want to do that. Typically, they're just trying to put food on their table and it's the bosses and the people who own those scam call centers that that should be the target of your ire for sure. No, like very, very, very well, beautifully said, very beautifully put. Um, Bolshevik apologist uh, asked, "When's the next patron Q and A?" For those unaware of what that what he's talking about, um, we also have a. Uh, I mean, it's not really Q and A; it's just a discussion with our um, patrons that we do over on the Discord. Um, it's once a month. We sit on there for like three, four hours sometimes even, uh, and just chat shit and then take questions and talk to the people. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So uh, you can you can join the Discord and then we can uh, um, have more of these these uh, lovely lovely discussions. Um, but as for when yeah, the next one is, we need to we need to go and schedule that. I'm not sure. It's yeah. probably my fault. There hasn't been one recently. I was in uh, Zimbabwe for a while, and then I got sick, and it kind of threw off my schedule big time. So we will mm. try to get that scheduled very soon. No, okay. we had one. We just will have the next one this week, uh, or the yeah. coming one, uh, by the 30th, like every month, for the yeah. special ca- category in which there's patrons, which, by the way, mm. You, the, the Discord is Patreon linked. Don't try to look for some link online. You're not going to find it. It's mm. linked to the... When you become a Patreon, you immediately get the the Discord invite, and then you are a member for life, basically, etc., uh, etc. Et and certain categories on Discord, uh, we organize the Q&A with, in which we talk to each other and get to know each other better, et cetera, et cetera. It's not just you know, fun. asking yeah. questions and uh, us answering. You guys mm-hmm. can teach us something as well. And it's super yeah. wild because there's people with like 20 different professions from yeah. 20 different countries every time. And you learn so much and we even get into debates. We even get into, but always friendly. We, uh, we explore our own ways of thought, each other's ways of thought. And, you know, there's different personalities. Some people, are very loud and talk too much others are very shy <laughs> so you got to bring them out of their shell it's uh it's very cool it's very cool it's yeah. always a very nice group of people so the fact that you're asking you probably are that level of a patron which we thank you for but yeah yes. the next one probably next week as always you'll see it on patreon and on the patreon discord yeah. when we post uh, when it's going on etc yes uh luis soriano sent 20 uh uh, Mexican pesos, I think, is the currency. Uh, what do you all think of the EZLN? Um, the EZLN was a very nice and interesting movement that is sadly impotent uh, and is just tolerated by the uh, um, Mexican government currently. If they want to crush it tomorrow, they would. Um, so it's just another... Um, it's like what Marx said, when insurrectionary, when insurrectionary movement goes on the defensive, that's when it dies. Um, and that's basically what happened. And instead of them being completely crushed, they were uh, kind of amnestied and they let them be in Chiapas in that little area because there's nothing that the Mexican state was really interested in in that area. Um, otherwise, they do some interesting stuff, but um, it is not a uh, model that we should really be... We can learn from it, but it's not something that we can really replicate um, uh, otherwise. Let's see. Um, ba, 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 ba. I don't know if we really want to talk about this one. Umbla, um, umbla, sorry. Um, umbla, umbla. <laughs> uh, $10, thank you very much. He said, talking about America, I know it's conjecture, but with radical opinions becoming more and more common within mainstream right-wing politics, how far will the nation go in terms of reactionary politic? wrote um uh, jt you're the american (laughs) yeah i mean a lot of people think well it can't get any worse than this but obviously it can and it will Uh, i think they're uh the right wing are going to take it as far as they possibly can as you know until they hit um mass resistance which they won't get from the democrats and will be hard pressed to get from the average american population because there's no real organization to to oppose it so i think the the country as a whole is definitely um shifting rightward pretty severely right now we're seeing a big reactionary push against uh trans rights um now we're seeing them they've gotten that 
They've sunk their teeth into the trans rights thing. They've had some success, so and now they're. Shapiro changed his profile picture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're ringing back the old school homophobia okay. now. Uh, I saw a tweet about some uh, woman getting a ticket for uh, indecent exposure for wearing just like a crop top t shirt in Louisiana. So they're definitely trying to to bring us back to you know the quote unquote good old days of very racist nineteen uh, fifties things like that. So it's a it's a valid concern to have that the U.S. is becoming more outright fascist because I think it definitely is. Um, and anyone who tries to downplay that, uh, I think, is kind of sticking their head in the sand. Yeah, but that's a performative culture, though, there, and in the right as well. Like, what, what the, the, the fucking idiots that they caught in the UPS van, they were going to go <laughs> and, like, push a bunch of people around. They didn't even have, like, a machete or a grenade or a gun or whatever. Yes, we have school shootings, et cetera, et cetera. We have ideological attacks on certain parts, but it's usually like one or two motherfuckers and so on. Like the leaders in a lot of very hard uh, reactionary movements are either fucking FBI agents who are there, uh, just grifters to make extra money. I'm not saying I completely agree with what you said, JT. I just feel like most of the most fascist leadership in the U.S., be it underground or be it in the surface, is in it for for the cash because it's mm. such a great way to make money. And I don't think they would like step across the line to actually uh, do much if the opportunity arises. Yeah. That does not mean that does not mean that people would who actually believe in a fascist way to organize the state uh, will not come forward and create actual organization structures, parties, overtake current parties, whatever you want to call it. That is an absolute possibility. The only thing I wanted to throw out there is uh, be it the 6th of January, be it like 500 other QAnon-related uh, uh, shit, it's so fucking performative. Everybody's out with their phone live streaming how he's mm -hmm. going to save the country from, from something, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But when I look at the fucking fascist marches where I'm from, or when I look at them in certain Western European countries, or extremely right-wing uh, or extremely religiously zealous movements in other parts of the world that that are people who believe in their shit no matter how much how fucked up it is but those are motherfuckers that are going to lay their li life on the line to bring forward their backwards idea the current structures in the u.s of these radical right-wing groups i i don't see that but again it could be formed very easily the poorer the country gets the more unstable it gets i'm not going to say cliches just wanted yeah. to say that yeah, I think that's definitely very, very true. I mean, people like Ben Shapiro, they'll go right up to the line of saying, oh, you know, we should exterminate gay people or whatever. But they pull back because that's, you know, their their livelihood is saying these things without getting themselves in trouble. So, yeah, I think you're definitely right that most of it is performative. Um, yeah. But we're, you know, with the new, the new batch of people coming to, like, uh, trying to contest or trying to... Um, primary Republicans from the right, there is some genuine fascist ideology there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Completely and correct. all of it is, is a, a beat on, like, but, uh, YouTube and all that shit. All of it's monetized, all of it, you know, no no issues whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, they, yeah, yeah. It, it's, the, it's the biggest meme. Mm-hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Vlad Slavsky uh, sent $5. Thank you very much. He says, thoughts on the PSL USA? I think we already talked about this. I've been in contact with them in San Diego, and they seem great, but wanted to hear your opinions, especially JT. Uh, anything to add on, on, on what you said earlier? Uh, I touched on it earlier that uh, I'm genu generally a fan of getting involved in whatever radical group is organizing near you, uh, and mm. PSL is one of those. So definitely, if you've had success with them, if you think uh, they're doing good work, definitely work with them all about it. Mm. Perfect, yeah, I completely agree. Uh, I think it, from the people that I know that I've spoken to, it's, uh, it depends on the, on the area, uh, like the um, yep. chapter. Some of them are really good, some of them are so-so. It really depends. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, let's see. Uh, somebody asked me, uh, where was it? Oh, no, no, I, I misread, excuse me. Uh, Ahmed Ishaq sent $2, thank you very much. He said, a far uh, rebellion, Yemen follow-up episode when? Uh, yeah, eh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe soon. There's so many other episodes. There's so much shit we need to get to. Uh, but uh, inshallah, in the future, why not? Uh, the US how, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you for a second. I love how, um, as the episode progresses, the more honest we are with our answers, we're like, okay, whatever, <laughs> next one. You know, like, 
<laughs> yeah, because be, uh, boys, we're becoming proper streamers, you know. And then, yeah. like, if we imagine if we streamed every day, now I realize why the streamers like treat their chat like fucking garbage. Like a guy comes yeah. in with like fifty bucks that they're donating, and they're like, "Stupid question, banned." And the guy's like, "What <laughs> the fuck? I just gave you fifty bucks." You know? Yeah, no, we wouldn't, we wouldn't ever do this. Look, of there's course. one rule with us. Yeah, yeah, it's like don't be racist, don't be sexist, don't say some, don't be, don't be cringe. Just, just don't be that. <laughs> no cringe. Kringe yeah, not yeah. allowed there. No kringe. No kringe, kringe. Mm. Did you guys watch that the, 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 the little uh, skeleton that goes tiki, tiki, tiki? Oh, tiki, yeah, tiki, I saw that. And, <laughs> and, and, and shoots those cops. It's like a Chilean, I think, uh, meme of, of like a GTA San Andreas mod. And it's all pixelated. Why is it always the pixelated memes that are so fucking high quality? And he like, mm. his mom or his aunt comes in and shouts at him. He takes a bat, he hits it in the head. And he walks out of the house and it's like super bad, 640 times 480 graphics and there's like cops in front of him well, a pair of cops just fucking on top of a cop car for some reason i don't know and he he does a little dance turns around and says tiki 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 and the cops when they see him because he says tiki tiki they also spin 360 degrees because they need to dance but it was a track it was a trap and he says taki 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 and he takes out the no taki 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 he takes out the tech nine and he shoots the cops and then he's like taki 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 and he runs away uh, i am doing it like not not the, the i'm not being able to obviously to do it justice is what you're looking for. Do it justice. Thank you, my love. Oh my god. You you, you waited though. I see that you I let you struggle a little bit. Let him struggle a little bit, motherfucker. <laughs> and I'm sober as fuck. That was my mistake. A live stream without a few beers and fucking stupid ass. I'll actually open up a can after this uh, this rant. But yes, um tiki tiki taki taki fucking high quality shit. My mass respect. All right. Uh USRA, United Socialist Republic of America, sent a dollar. Thank you very much. Um hold on. Saint Guillotine said five dollars. Thank you. Said, can we get a Marxist analysis of how and why chicken would be homophobic, please? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a rhetorical question. Everybody knows that the chicken is homophobic. The better it is, the more homophobic it is. Apparently, according according to our American comrades. Um, yes. I don't know. I'd, look, hey, we have some banger chicken over here, um, and and their political opinions are not stated. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's his chicken that's thoroughly neutral. Um, but yeah, I think it is rather obvious that all chickens are lesbian and all cocks are gay. Okay, there you go. Um, M. Dilla, I, I will go to hell for what I just said. I will literally, I should be castrated and thrown into the deepest no. pits Cancel next to okay. Lucifer himself. It was so bad. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, Chris, uh, Christian Jarvis and five dollars. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Julian said, "Hakeem, do you have any recommended readings that combine medicine and revolutionary practices?" Thank you. No, there isn't. There's a book called Bread Medicine about Soviet healthcare, which is interesting. Uh, Guevara, one of his first uh, like theoretical works that he worked on was a book on revolutionary medicine that uh, he wrote like 40 pages of and then he completely scrapped and then got rid of the manuscript that he had and the only reason we know about it is because he wrote about it to a letter to his mother where he says yeah it's garbage so I'm not going to finish it um, so that was uh, that may have been a banger I don't know <laughs> but that's that um, Bolshevik Apologist says do you think gamer should be censored exactly yes gamer and yes. French <laughs> should be censored um <laughs> Uh, Khaled Amir says, off topic, opinions on sociopolitical situation in India, you have to be much more specific. It's a very big country with a lot going on, especially right now. Um, so, yeah, feel free to, to, to clarify uh, if you want. Um, Christian Jarvis again said, have you ever read In Defense of October? If so, what do you think? If not, I recommend it. In Defense of October it sounds familiar, but it's not. It rings a bell, but I'm not exactly. Uh, what's the, what the fuck do, do Americans say? <laughs> rings a bell, but it doesn't. No, it's not, uh, it doesn't hit the mark. It's not rolling off the top of so my thumb. there's there's close but no cigar when someone attempts oh. to do something but it's not correct <laughs> not correct. <laughs> Whatever that means. Um, which <laughs> okay. is not what you're looking for. I think ring, rings a no. bell is usually by itself. So I don't know what you okay. could be searching for. Okay, I yeah, see. Okay, Where's thank you. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, you you understand what I mean. Yeah. Um, I, for some reason, my mind keeps going to uh, what's it called? Uh, Ten days that shook the world. Uh, oh yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, it's a, I, I can't comment uh, further. Um, let's see. Um, uh, Emzil again. Thank you very much. He says, I've been arguing with my sister over socialism. She has tried to use Jonestown as an example of human nature. Your thoughts. Love your vids. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> do, do you guys want to comment on Jonestown? Um, there's nothing oh, social about that. It, a, bunch, a guy went to Guyana, I think, with a bunch of people, and he had like kind of a weird cult. Uh, and then he uh, put like poison in the Kool-Aid or cyanide or something. They all drank it and died. Um, but the guy was also claimed to be a leftist of some kind. He was like, oh, these are the people's temples, and we're going to have commit the people's suicide. 
died or some shit. I don't know yeah. what the fuck he did. So, so, so uh, what is it supposed to represent? Like, how is that a representation of human nature? Cults are the definition of what uh, cults do an incredibly good job of explaining away the concept of human nature as mm -hmm. we are introduced to it in neoliberalism, which tells us uh, greed is a part of human nature, not, which tells us a person is born with uh, as a particular type of person, and no matter where, what sort of social system you put them in, they're going to do what they want to do, and if they dislike the system or like it, they're going to manipulate it in order to be better than anyone else in said system. But what is a cult? A cult is called a cult because it manages to completely change uh, the way people perceive reality and introduce, uh, delete the previous perception of reality and introduce a new perception of reality, basically overriding the previous quote-unquote human nature of said person. And for example, introducing the idea that if we all kill ourselves, we're going to be reborn as fucking Superman in like two hours and then we're going to rule the world or whatever. Cults have managed to convince people that this is the realistic state of the world. And if they if they do it, they're going to be able to uh, to achieve some sort of greater enlightenment, et cetera, et cetera. So a cult indirectly is proof that human nature can be altered to a point at which that said human is basically unrecognizable to normal quote unquote members of society. It's, it's, mm. I don't, I don't get, get the question. Probably the question is uh, because the leader was there. So he manipulated the, uh, the leftists that came there because they came there for leftism, but then he made it into I mean, a thing. I don't, I, don't even know. Know if, I don't even know if that is the thing. I don't know if they were actually, if there was any political program to it. I think it was just <laughs> like just a cult. Um, yeah. But like, even in that case, there's been one example of that. And there's been like hundreds of cults that aren't, weren't explicitly political or political on the other side of the fence. Um, so yeah, this is, I think, uh, a very pointless. Um... No, but to me, it's interesting because like cult, the, your, uh, what was it, sister? She uh, yeah, used a cult as an argument in favor of the existence. Okay, nobody's arguing that there is, is no human nature, but the argument usually is how much does it depend on uh, the way you're born versus and the way all humans are versus how much society influences the way we are. But again, to repeat, a cult literally is a defining example of how this quote-unquote human nature can be massively altered based on social factors and the, your social environment in which you are in for a long period of time. So that's why I got angry. It's just fucking, what the fuck? Yeah, you hear the human nature argument a lot, but I've never heard it applied to cults. That seems kind of counterintuitive to me. So I'd be, I'd be curious to hear more about why your sister thinks that. Yeah, I don't know. I completely agree. It's a, it's a, it's my least favorite, uh, um, what's it called? Uh, arguing from the other side. It's so yeah, it's it's so tired. It's such it's a, a cop tired, out. Off repeated... Yeah, and the thing is, they can't even usually clarify or you know um, build upon what they mean. It's like you know, it's like oh, one gorillion people dead. Like it's it's yeah. that kind of thing um, where they think it's just like a, a learned or memorized catchphrase and throw it out. And they think it shuts down the conversation. But if you interrogate it any further, then you realize that they don't really know what they're talking about. It's a very boring fucking discussion. Mm. Um, Stewie uh, sent five uh, euros, I believe. Thank you very much. He said, hi, all. Love from Portugal. What's your take on leftist is when no jokes? Conservatives can't make good jokes, and I need my fix. Um, that's absolute nonsense. The funniest <laughs> yeah. fucking people I've ever known are, are uh, left wing. Um, there are so many, uh, what's it called? I think this is again, a stupid point. Uh, the, the right wing has like three jokes. It's, uh, what the fuck? Attack a helicopter. Yep. Um, uh, fucking Happy, uh... communism, no food. And uh, yeah, happy, happy non, unspecified uh, gender. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, paternal figure day. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's the same fucking jokes every day, right? Um, over and over. So it's that's much, much, there's a new one. Much trans woman competing against uh, normal quote unquote yeah, yeah. woman in sports. That, that that's a new classic, an but, absolute classic. When they just post a picture, oh lord. Yeah, but even and that's a riff on the other one, the earlier ones. Yeah, it's just a copy. It's a rebrand, yeah, yeah, yeah. a more it's, modern one. Yeah, it's it's, it's two jokes, honestly. I say, uh, JT, uh, somebody has said something that will shake the foundations. I think. Uh, oh boy, you might need to ban him. He, he said, Chick Fil A sucks. It's too salty and flavorless. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, he, he, he built upon his argument by saying Chick Fil A gets by on efficiency, ain't service more than flavor. 
Okay, that's fair. KFC. Yes, they are very they are very efficient. Okay. Um, <laughs> <You concede. laughs> yeah, I concede defeat. Um, I will go commit Sudoku. Um, but I, I'm gonna get Chick Fil A one more time before I go. Chickenoku. <laughs> commit less, Sudoku uh... through chicken, like overeat chicken to the point at which your internal organs burst out through your stomach, which basically okay. is what you would do in Sudoku. Yeah. I, I mean, I will admit that the chicken it, it it's not that flavorful. I wouldn't eat. I would I would not choose to eat it if I didn't also get the sauces with it because I love their buffalo sauce a lot. It's very good. Oh, nice. Uh, I tried this the other day. Um, there was a uh, um, like a wrap place or something, and they had something called peri peri sauce. Ooh, peri peri is never, great. Yeah, yeah. I've, ne- I've never heard of it before. I tried it. it. Was the first time I tried it. It was very good. I really liked it. Um, uh, I used it for for like uh, salad later uh, afterwards as well. I had a bit left, uh, and I mixed it in with like halloumi chips and shit like that. It was very very good. Um, anyways, uh, Elias alone said, "Watching this at my job right now. Deprogram time on the company time." Yes, this is I think exclusively <laughs> you should listen to Deprogram. We've right? got a Get bunch paid of listening to Deprogram. <laughs> a bunch of people in the uh, in the chat think we were serious about committing Sudoku. We know it's seppuku. Oh <laughs> Sudoku, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. <laughs> And after that, I will commit chess and I will uh, bowl myself out. (laughs) You will disembowel yourself. That's bad. (laughs) That's like your uh, the the fish with the trout. uh, The benefit of the trout, yeah. The benefit of the trout. (laughs) That's okay. It's don't worry about it, guys. It's all water under the fridge now. I've forgiven you. (laughs) That sounds like something I'd say. (laughs) (laughs) Oh Jesus Christ. (laughs) (laughs) v3800 sent 20 dollars thank you he says chick-fil-a a chick chick-fil-a a chickens are closeted okay chick chick-fil-a chickens there we go i can't fucking read are closeted hey maybe that's the case who knows um no french no gamers especially no french gamers exactly um imagine being a french gamer oh lord almost yeah. as insane as being an australian oh wait it doesn't exist <laughs> Oh, oh, Lord. Okay. Let me just sip my Rakia. Go ahead. Take a nice, loud sip for us next to the mic. Um, oh, nice. Mm. Uh, Siddhartha Dongano, uh, Dongano Car, sorry, uh, says, hello, comrades. Hello. Um, let's see. I just I want to get through them because then they're going to start disappearing. Um, Chairman Miao uh, sent 20 kroners, I believe. Opinions on Duche. Um, uh, just. I, 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 Huh? The, the necromancy good. There you go, exactly, <laughs> right? Um, uh, Marxism doesn't apply to Korean conditions, blah, blah, blah. It's not exactly a fully fleshed out ideology. Some people say that it's uh, idealist because they, you know, it, it gets in a long conversation. It doesn't matter because it's it's barely a real thing. Um, yeah, uh, but also hilariously, there. Uh, my favorite part is that the, there are unironic American leftists who are like, we need American juche. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, if there's one country that could stand for self-reliance, it would be the United States. Um, B. Manslay said, Hakim, Jibna's, uh, Jibna's I, I hate that, like, Shami people say Jibna, because uh, we just say Jibna. Uh, J- uh, Jibna is like cheese, uh, but we say Jibna in, in Iraq. Uh, versus Zatar versus uh, Laham. Uh, um, uh, meat. Meat, meat by far. Um, ah, fuck, it's not that meat. Meat, fuck. <laughs> there you go, there's my answer. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Crosama said five dollars. Thank you. Hi, I'm reading into the Mexican Revolution, other socialist movements involving Mexicanos, and views of Zapatistas and indigenous revolutions. Uh, I think that we already discussed this earlier. Um, but by the way, if you're interested, there's a much longer answer I gave with one of the live streams I did with Paul. Uh, if you'd like to, if you're interested in that. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, there are there were people who are like it's so cool. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, Tony Rizzo sent two dollars. Thank you. Uh, he, um, they say rule of ro- roost uh, is greater than Chick Fil A any day. What is rule of ro- of the roost? I've never heard of this. Is it a regional thing? Am I just being uh, dumb? I'm not sure what that is. They, they're called they're called Tony Rizzo, so they're probably from New Jersey. So it's probably <laughs> a New Jersey thing. Yeah. Um. You need to make cooking videos for real. Yeah, we we will eventually. It will be a, a special. Uh, it was one of our ideas actually, is that we'll we'll go to um, visit uh, JT again uh, and again. I mean, like reiterating that we uh, we have the desire to visit JT. It's not like I'm, I'm just like you know 
it pops, pops into in from time sure. to time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and we'll do like a, a proper thing where I, I would love for us three to do a what's it called, uh, like a cook off thing. And oh, each God. three of us try to make something. I it would be lose. so fucking fun. And then we all eat our sh- each other's shit. And then we that you would, would be so fun. Lose. Yeah. <laughs> do not lose. I don't know how to cook anything. I live in a country where the women still do all the cooking, so I don't do any cooking. So I literally am skillless. <laughs> so you, you will fill the the hot middle position, right yeah, in between. Right. I'll like, take it. Like the hot dog you are. Okay. He'll be he'll be the the homophobic chicken between our two uh, uh, ethnic slices. Nice. No, come on, you yeah. missed it. Because the chicken is female, and he would be in between two male chickens, which are called oh. what? <laughs> is that what you want? Yeah. <laughs> he would be the chicken in between two of our. Okay, I, I, like I think we would be banned if I said it. Okay, oh. go. For it. You know, I, I accidentally once. Oh god, I don't know why. Uh, I went and I I got chicken. This is a long time ago, and it was a a like fertilized hen. So the meat was all like tough. And I was huh. like, what the fuck is this? Why why what why are you selling this? That's weird. <laughs> um, so yeah. Yeah, I know. It was the first. It was the one and only time I made that mistake, um, and it was disgusting. I don't know what what happens, but it becomes really unpleasant. I don't know why. Huh. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see. Um, uh, Christian Yarvis sent five dollars. Thank you. He says uh, hello again. Any thoughts on theory of permanent revolution? Are you familiar with it? For I guess permanent revolution is nonsense. <laughs> there you go. That's my answer. Um, <laughs> the best tr- way Trotsky was an idiot. <laughs> the best way I've seen that described uh, succinctly is there's a meme where it's Trotsky on a plane as a flight attendant. <laughs> And he's holding one of the oxygen masks. And he says, remember, when the oxygen masks deploy, make sure to put on everyone else's mask before you put on your own. <laughs> so that, yeah, that about yeah. sums it up. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. Uh, renders and five, I think that's the, the non-existent country's dollars. Uh, what, do you guys, what are you guys, uh, guys' thoughts on graffiti? Art is important for social progress, and in the West, graffiti tends to have anti-capitalist undertones. Uh, I, have right incredibly, good. I have incredibly reactionary opinions of graffiti, so I will hold my tongue. Oh, really? Oh, my God. No, it's great I, if it's good, but if you're just yeah. writing shit on a wall, like, yeah. suck a cock, on, mm. and, and then the, 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 the people living in the building will have to get money together to paint over it, then what the fuck are you doing? But if it's mm. in, in, in if, if you make it good, like, like everything in life, make mm. it good, man. Make it good. Mm. If it's good, it's good. If yeah. it's, it sucks balls, it sucks balls. But there you go. Like, yeah, I had sorry, I was just, sorry to cut you off. I have this idea personally because it's exactly like that. I hate people. I think it's called tagging in, in tagging. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, that shit is just hideous. But when it's actual like mural art, I think it's very nice. I would think in a socialist country, uh, there should be an actual um, just like how in Cuba there is like an official government body for for rap. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, if you're unaware, Castro called rap the vanguard of the revolution. Amazing. So that's. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there should be, I think, an actual bureau for this. And people who want to do art on, uh, you know, they can go, there will be areas where they can practice as much as they want. They have the, what's it called, the sprays provided. They have walls where they can practice this stuff. And they can get, you know, like they, there's competitions for people who have options to do art on major mural sites around cities and stuff like that. So your art can actually be displayed. It can be productive and socially, you know, um, right, uh, beneficial rather than this shit where somebody just draws, I don't know, fucking uh a porcupine on the side of a fucking train i don't know what people do um yeah it, it is an interesting way for example the only tags i kind of semi approve of is like tags that you use to fuck up like fascist fa- uh, yeah. tags yeah, that, and stuff i've done that like at least 30 nights of my life we would just go around in the car pop out it quickly fuck up some shit uh then move on if it's a big mural we would have uh, balloons filled with paint, et cetera, et cetera, throw and fuck up, for example, the picture of some uh, big uh, fashy piece of shit, uh, mm-hmm. or very quick uh, D-tags of cre- turning swastikas into boxes. That's an absolute classic. You can do so much. You can turn it into uh, Windows into logo. smiley yeah. face. You, can, you yeah. can turn it into a Windows logo, which arguably is it, wor- is it better than a swastika? <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, it, it is. It is. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I mean, actually, when you think about what bill has been doing enough yeah okay. true uh yeah yeah mr. But, mr. mr bill i think the blacks have too many kids gates you think yeah. it's not a bit just slightly a bit fashy yeah yeah <laughs> oh my god my bad uh yeah. but but the only like i feel kind of relatively proud one and it's um a lot of the cities in the balkans are kind of segmented uh ideologically usually the closer you get to the football stadiums the more swastikas you see yeah, the yeah. more you go into the artistic 
part of town, the more hammers and sickles or anarchy yeah. signs you see, et cetera, et cetera. People who make good, mu uh, good music and the people who make good, good music and know how to fuck. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Saying. That's what you said. And it feels, it feels good. It's like propaganda that like tells you you're not alone. Yeah. Uh, and it really like it's a random night or whatever or a day and I'm walking by in whatever mood I'm in. And then I see something like that. And especially in the part of the world where the, the because I said this 5000 times, but uh, the reasons why, but, but where the left is very weak, let's be honest. Yeah. And you see that and you're like, OK, actually, like physically, not just online, there are people around me who uh, who are radical and who uh, who share my belief system. And it's nice. It it uh, amps you a bit, you know. Even you go into a toilet and you see a anti-fascist sticker, right? Like that's does that actually do something? No, but it tells me that I can feel relatively safe in this club because when I go to the toilet and I see a bunch of stickers with swastikas or white power symbols and nobody's taking them off, and it's obvious that they've been there for like three months. I'm like, okay, I'm in the wrong fucking bar. Time to leave, mm -hmm. my friend. So it's it's <laughs> it's it's a way to kind of. It, it literally is copying gangs. You're, you're tagging the part of town where you're saying, okay, if you're a fucking skinhead, but a fascist skinhead, not a leftist skinhead, will break your legs if, if you're here. So you feel more safe as a communist walking those streets. But I'm talking about an extreme niche that only applies to me. I can't, uh, yeah. that's how I personally feel about it. But that's, 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 that's it. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, Autumn Artist 413, uh, thank you very much. Uh, they say, given the format rising uh, anti-trans, anti-queer rhetoric, would you all consider having a trans comrade on the podcast to talk about the situation and what is to be done from their perspective? I think that's very interesting. That's definitely an idea that we have on the list um, that we'd like to get to eventually. But like we said, there's so many, so many fucking ideas we have. So eventually all this will be gotten to, don't worry. Um, somebody said something else. Hey, <clears throat> hey guys, there's a huge communist festival in Portugal called Festival Avante in the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of September organized by the Portuguese Communist Party. You should come. Well, if you'll show us around, then yes, we will come. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of the Kamal Harris thing. He's like, do not come. Do not come. Do not come. <laughs> do not come. I'm going to come. <laughs> I, love it. I, I quote that shit daily. I love it. Um, oh, fuck. Uh, John Eldritz said $5. Thank you. He said, thoughts on accelerationism. I'd care what the broad definition of historical contest. Of, fuck, I can't read. Definition of historical contest of it, but we're getting closer to fascism every day here in Canada. Um, acceleration, uh, accelerationism is when politics go go brr. That's what, basically what it is. Um, <laughs> fast, sonic fast, sonic fast. Yeah. It's the idea that oh, like you need to make things like you know Lenin's idea. Things get uh, the worst things get the better, but not the way that Lenin intended it. Yeah. Um, I'm personally not of uh, you know. It, again, it depends on the situation, uh, but I think vast majority of cases, including right now, it's not applicable. Yeah. Um, Unless you guys have something to add. Well, I mean, it's partly, no. like, I, if there were some form of, like, to take the United States, for example, if there were some form of class consciousness, then maybe you could make an argument for, for stepping on the gas a little bit in terms of making those people's lives worse. But as of right now, if you were to make people's lives worse by, you know, voting in a bunch of fascists or whatever the average american will not understand why things are getting worse really they won't have a good understanding of of the actual causes uh, so you're not going to see them organize and and solve those problems things are just going to get worse for no reason so i think education is vastly more important than trying to make things so bad that the average person picks up arms or whatever mm. yeah exactly right uh, but also, and again, like we mentioned before, material conditions, different things can lead to different outcomes and different processes. Yeah, 100%. So, um, yes. Uh, GL Varla said, Tim thank you very much. He said, hello, my beautiful friends. Greetings from Southern California. Hello. Uh, I hope it's nice and warm and sunny and, and pleasant, and I hope the, the uh, state isn't on fire right now. <laughs> <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it, isn't it, is it ever not on fire? <laughs> Yeah, is it, I want. What? How is California in like the winter? Does it get snow? Is it or is it just like completely? Well, California is renowned for being pretty mild and temperate year round. That's why everybody really? wants to to move there. Um, and very few bugs in some places. Actually, I just liberated a Volvo from California. I brought it to to mm. blessed Texas. <laughs> Should be here yeah, from Calm California to, <laughs> yeah. to the, the free state, After the free of state of Texas. Texas. <laughs> the BST baby. Oh, but, but you brought a commie car to a Fiesta. It's made by the mm. Scandinavians. They are and now owned by the Chinese. Oh, yeah. so uh, exactly there right. There we go. Oh my God! Even worse, Jesus Christ. 
JT, it's, what are you it's, and, and, and like, no, it's even worse that like the Chinese are not white, so it's it's even more disastrous. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip out the communist heart of the car and put in a, a big thumping American heart, the V8. <laughs> so then it just starts breaking down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just corrodes the fucking. Right, it's okay. Soon we're gonna find out that JT is two percent. Uh, you got two percent Caribbean. You're not. Uh, <laughs> Ethnically pure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Lodzlowski said, uh, I'm glad you're doing better, uh, JT, and got over your illness. Uh, I have to go subject myself to capital exploitation in five minutes. Thank, thank you guys for the live stream. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm sorry that we took a second to get to your uh, question. I don't know if you're still in, but uh, thank you. Um, oh, there's a few more. Sorry, sorry. Bam that Bamboo fella suggested uh, way back has some bops. Yes, he does. Um, everybody go listen to Bamboo. B-A-M-B-U. Uh, Exercising a Demon is one of the best fucking albums ever made. Um, let's see. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. Holding up. Oh, okay. I think we, we went through all of them. Nice, nice. Oh, we did it. Yay. Yay. For once. For once, we actually went through... Uh, yeah, we always get so um, far behind that we never finish answering all the questions. So yeah. congratulations to us. Um, mm. Yeah, I see in the chat. OMG, he actually bought the 240. Yes, I did. I bought a gorgeous 92 <laughs> silver uh, 240 a, wagon, my dream car. Tell, us, tell us what you're going to do with it. Tell us what you're going to do with it. All right. Uh, so uh, several years ago, this has been a, an idea I've had for a long time. I've always wanted a Volvo 240, and I had a 240 wagon uh, like three years ago, and I was originally going to get it uh, swapped, V8 swapped. And I took it, and they put it up on the jack, and it was just too rusted out underneath, which is a big problem for Volvos. They rust really badly. Um, so over the last few years, I've been searching for one that's rust free. Um, and that's not a million dollars. So I finally found one fairly recently and bought it. I'm going to sell my current car and replace it with a car that's older than I am. <laughs> so <laughs> wish me luck. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, swap the, uh, stock four cylinder for a, some kind of LS, um, V8. Haven't decided which yet. The more cost-effective oh route would be to go with something like uh, like an LQ9, one of the iron block um, truck engines, but they're very heavy, uh, so that would weigh the front of the car down. So we'll see. Um, obviously, I'll, I'll have to do all the other stuff to make it safe, so like fix, fix the suspension, make that a little uh, more modern, uh, bigger brakes, things like that. I'll eventually probably reupholster the seats because they're old and cloth. But that is, uh, that's the idea. It's to make the, the perfect Volvo... Uh, road trip car, and I'm going to keep that thing forever. Well, what do you define as the perfect road trip car? Help me, help me understand. Like, what the internal, um, so it's internal something... comforts, how fast it can go, how comfortable it drives, how yeah. spacious it is. Teach a noob. So the perfect road trip car to me is stuff that is something that can fit all of your your gear, your stuff. If you're going like camping or whatever, you can put the tent and all the stuff in the back. Maybe some bikes. Uh, has enough seats. Uh, Volvo will will fit you know five um, in the seats if you've got stuff in the trunk. Um, it has enough power to to pass people uh, whenever you need to, which is something the Volvo struggled with off the out of the factory. But with but a big, now with big, a V8, baby, <laughs> should be fine. <laughs> Um, fuck them up. Only yeah. driving on the left lane, man. Motherfucker. That's you can right. Confuse the shit out of all those portions <laughs> and shit. Like, what the fuck is this fucking caravan shit doing? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's fuck yeah. Do do lots of stories with that shit. Videos yeah, I'm excited. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And I saw somebody say, "Oh, MG, I thought he was talking about a Datsun." Yeah. Um, the 240, the Datsun 240Z is also a beautiful car. My first car actually was a 280Z, and that thing was a piece of junk. It was falling apart. I bought that after like a summer of work. Um, for, you know, I don't know, maybe $2,000. And it was great. I learned to drive manual in that thing. I actually didn't know how to drive stick before I bought that car. I messaged the dude on Craigslist. I'm like, I'm going to get a friend to bring me over after work. Don't sell it. I'll be there today after work. And I got there, and I brought a buddy of mine to drive my car back, and I drove the manual back like half an hour through traffic in Texas after knowing only in theory how to drive manual. So that was a... a, a, a nerve-wracking experience to say the least i stalled it a couple of times uh in stop and go traffic so but i got it there um but yeah that thing didn't last too long i ended up selling it to a buddy who took it to colorado and it died there 
Oh, no. So, <laughs> rip, rip, that's in the chat, boy. <laughs> yep. Uh, I was that's just the say. sweetest point when you sell it. Or, sorry, when you sell it, and then the next guy who gets it, it just fucking dies on him. You don't have to <laughs> yeah. pay for all the repairs or not be able to sell. Uh, it's, it's like, yes, you fucked over a guy, but did you really? You were just smarter than him. Capitalism, free market, <laughs> my ass. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I was going to say, um, uh, Jill Al uh, Alvarado, uh, she asked, sorry if this is a stupid que question, but how do you, uh, how do we join the Patreon Discord? Um, if you join the Patreon, then you automatically get added into uh, the Discord if your Discord uh, tag is linked to your Patreon account. So you go into your settings on Patreon and you add your uh, Discord <clears throat> tag and then we'll uh, add you automatically. If it doesn't, then just message us on the uh, Discord, um, no, excuse me, on the Patreon, uh, like internal messaging system and say, hey, I'm not in, so can you please put me in and we will. So uh, that's uh, to answer your question. Back back to the uh, car discussion. Um, I remember we did an episode actually on some shitty, uh, what's it called, uh, cars uh, that each of us either had or families had. Um, but yeah, I was going to say something. Fuck. Um, yeah, I didn't know, uh, like, uh, the, the what's called market for, like, uh, vin oh, it's not, is it considered vintage? Yeah, over 25 what? years old is a classic. Is, is right, legally yeah, okay, classified yeah. as a classic. We don't really have that sort of cult. like yeah a little bit there, like it does kind of exist but not to the same extent that it does in the uh, in, like to the same extent as in the U.S. Uh, which I think is a shame because there's a lot of nice um, mm -hmm. I don't know why I think a lot most modern cars look like shit. I agree. <laughs> they they lost their great. soul along the way. There are a few good ones uh, these days that are cool and and uh, will stand the test of time. But I think a lot of the older cars where they are still figuring out like what should be standard and and what looks cool and stuff like that uh i think have they have fun, more soul changer but no no uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. ac <laughs> oh my god oh my god no they definitely lost their soul uh, like and the majority of the brands understand that uh, like it's now i hate blaming the consumer but the passion for cars is also nowhere even near what it used to be for people 20 30 40 years ago right yeah i think we can all agree on that so ever like more and more people look at them as just you know four wheels that take me from a to b and obviously that's me marxist blah 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 people are poor and poor so they can afford less uh, expensive cars blah, blah, blah. Uh, but the passion is literally not there so when you want to create something that's actually interesting you don't really even have a market which to to kind of sell it on so you so you kind of give up but some brands are still managing to uh mm -hmm. to come out with a with a, with an interesting spin from time to time but usually the flagship is just the flagship it's just a small update it's a, the new iphone of the of the previous flagship and not just the flagship like fucking family cars who do such like interesting shit but they were like nah i'm just gonna do a fucking minivan forever and that's um the SUV, the minivan, the fucking sports car, the uh, everything is just—they all look the same to, mm. to me. I mean, yeah, be it I mean, Japanese, Korean, German—it's it, all going towards the same like ball-looking fucking fucking. You know, it's too sleek. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah, no yeah. actual line. There's nothing. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you know for sure. It's it's the weirdest thing. Um, yeah. You know, like uh, something that I think when it comes to, to, to vehicles, I don't know why, but all other alternate modes of transport have become much more attractive to me mm. than, uh, than cars in, in recent times. Uh, of course, in the U.S. it's different, right? Um, because in the U.S. There, there's barely any, like it's a huge country and there's very bad infrastructure. Yeah. Um, but shit like, I don't know, like an electric bike, that shit sounds like one Those that you cool. can pedal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, I'm actually thinking of like, hmm, maybe I should, I should, I should get one. Um, if I can find one used, because those things are too fucking expensive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking of like, yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll be one of those guys. I'll, I'll you take the electric bike to work. And if I feel like pedaling, I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. in cities when you don't, like if you don't need to find a parking space for your car, that's huge. I mean, you save on gas. It's probably quicker to get there without the traffic and stuff. Yeah, all about that. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, I'd never drive. But like my car, if my girlfriend wasn't taking it to work, I think it will start rotting. But, uh, <laughs> oh, we have great public transportation infrastructure where I'm at. It makes zero uh, sense to take the car. It makes absolutely jealous. No sense. Fucking idiots still do it, and then you have these massive traffic jams. I love just walking by them and like uh, 
bickering about how they're fucking stupid and they need to go to the mall with their fucking car even though there's a metro exit that's exiting in the mall itself i, wow. I, would, I would not get it but uh but whatever doesn't doesn't minimize my like childhood since childhood uh passion for for cars i don't know jack shit about cars etc cetera, etc cetera, but i just like when it drives well cargo fast i am i am <laughs> Happy almost boy. next to me it's actually, i'm very happy boy very happy the, boy. The, the best i think actually one of the uh most pleasant um i don't know it's just like a vibe it's it's just the the, the the experience for me is you're in a car it's very late at night right yes and you're on the highway and you just have the fucking orange you know the mercury fucking lights um of the highway you roll the windows down and you're blasting either mochadama or sewer slut or something and you're just <laughs> zooming on the highway that shit is so fucking good um i don't yeah, know why it's, it, 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 yeah yeah, yeah. It, but, but and you Go on, go on, go on. I apologize. Go on. No, I was just gonna say that, but there's something really like dangerous about that because you just—it makes you want to just go faster, or you listen to funk or something like that, and you're just like, "Fucking let's, let's fucking go." <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. Oh, you're gonna say I'm, I'm, I'm a stupid ass. Fucking, I drive, I drive too fast. I should stop. Yeah. But actually, as I'm getting older, my like my subconscious is getting, getting wiser. So I'm, I'm getting scared more easily. I don't know if it's happening with you guys, but like I'm literally like shit. I didn't give a fuck about before mm -hmm. now I'm like my brain goes like dude you you can die like yeah or, you know um but yeah uh, it happens with you as well <laughs> yeah to an extent yeah. like with cars especially i'm like man there's no need to drive like super aggressively they, yes drive quickly like keep up with traffic pass slow people all that stuff but don't like blast around the the outside right lane and overtake somebody exactly. that you know 130 that's just silly yeah <laughs> There's a stupid culture here of going with your car to the club, but thankfully the market has adapted to it. And now you have uh, so-called drink and drive services where they come with an additional car and they you go inside of your car and they drive your car together with uh, another car that's going to then pick up the driver back to your place so you don't fucking crash and kill a uh, whole family. Don't drink and drive, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please. But we just <laughs> wanted to touch on because uh, it reminded me what Hakim told about cruising down the highway. C couldn't agree more, especially at night. But like, I'm a product of my my environment. But I think no, that's actually like just being a dude everywhere, <laughs> driving super fucking slowly, like yeah. cruising with a window down, the air coming in, and your favorite song fucking blasting loud, and being an annoying it. nuisance to everybody that you're <laughs> passing. But it feels oh. so fucking good, dude. It feels Only on the so highway. fucking good. Hmm? Only on the highway do I, I do I do this, by the way. It's not like I'm in the middle of yeah, the street. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, but I'm I, saying I like doing it in the middle of the street, just cruising really slow, <laughs> like driving 20, 30, and like there's some fucking uh, death metal or or some fucking good rap song or, or techno or whatever blasting through my window. And like yeah. the wind is coming in from the window and then it's coming a bit in from the, from the AC. The sun yeah. is shining on my face. I feel like I'm on top of the fucking world, man. It's, We're gonna... it's unexplainable phenomenal yeah we'll do that don't you worry we're gonna we'll, we'll all meet up and then we'll we'll have fun i can't i cannot wait for this shit man god damn <laughs> that's gonna be great right. um somebody asked what i'm playing on the gamecube obviously melee that's the only gamecube game that's actually not too there there are a lot of good gamecube games but yes i'm playing melee resident evil 1 remake oh man, yeah, it's yeah, yeah amazing resident evil Zero is also a really good game that nobody fucking played <laughs> but it's a very good game um and play that little game in the like roman underworld thing that i i told you guys about oh uh, yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure out of context for listeners because it was an episode we recorded let's just it's super, before they disappear like super quick run through yeah, the yeah. front through the donuts you guys uh, hold least... down the hold down the fort while i'm gone i'll be right back Okay, go piss. Uh, Elise uh, Freeman, uh, love your work, dear comrade. Solidarity from Minnesota's Iron Range. Please continue to fight the good fight uh, and long live the memory of Lenin. God hey. bless, my friend. Thank you so much for the $10. Uh, Saint Guillotine coming in again. Uh, you're basically buying us lunch, all of us tomorrow, with all of your donors. Thank you so much. Thoughts on the devil going down to Georgia and the material implications 
of such an event. Depends on which Georgia. If he went to the Georgia, the country Georgia, he would get his ass whooped because that is the most uh, <laughs> radically religious Orthodox Christian country in the world. It has the oldest Orthodox church in the world, I think. So he would get his ass whooped. But uh, tell me, Hakim, what do you think if he went to the actual uh, American, American Georgia? Yeah, uh, it, it depends which groups he uh, he he mixes amongst. But I'm sure those soulless husks that uh, uh, fill parts of the Senate will will more than gladly be, see, see their reflection in his face. Um, they're gonna be yeah. buddy buddy. Yeah. But also define what you mean by by devil. Um, uh, but yeah, unless this is, this was a reference to a particular politician. Um, but hey, they're all devils. Ha ha! American comment, American political commentary. Ha ha! Um, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> we live in a society. <laughs> <laughs> the context <laughs> are devils uh, oh, super sorry. deep uh have sorry you gonna say something we got the question again uh, my, my beautiful korean friend have you all considered inviting socialism for all on sorry if you responded already i'm at work and then here at the last time uh we are considering many different potential guests and actually socialism for all sounds uh, like they're our type of person so depending on what topic we're talking about, et cetera, et cetera, uh, why not? Literally, why not? And I think the boys would agree. Um, I'm back, Mike by the way. Lanning, hey. hello, hello. Uh, Mike Lanning with a $20. Uh, thank you so much coming with. I am very late for the Q&A, so forgive me if you've covered this. Have you considered or are you considering having a member of the Ukrainian left on the podcast. That would be an interesting idea, but we talked about this 500 times at this point. Like, we have so many things to touch on, and everybody, absolutely everybody, is talking about the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict. So we're like, this has been covered from like 7,000 different perspectives. Uh, We can do it, and yeah, it's going to get some publicity or whatever, but it would feel like fake because we're only doing it to get publicity. It, It would arguably for me specifically kind of even feel like a bit of war profiteering to an extent yeah, uh, so uh, that's why we try to kind of move away from it but you never know uh, maybe in the future I can't say that we won't do it but mm. for now it just it's again it's getting covered so much that why why another voice in uh, in a sea of uh, screaming chickens yeah yeah no I completely agree there's no point um but yeah uh, Mikey uh, GC8 uh, asked, would you consider having uh, Hassan on the show? Uh, or Hassan, I'm sorry. As they, they <laughs> Hassan Abi? Uh, the great leader uh, Hassan Abi? Uh, um, yeah, I, I, would, I would not have an issue with it. Absolutely. I would love um, it. Yeah. I'm a bit of a fangirl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then the, we know who's going to uh, go reach out then. In that case. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, somebody asked something a little bit uh, more relevant, which was, I have some halloumi. What do I do? Uh, Thomas Grassier asks, I have halloumi, what do I do? Um, cut it up into strips, black pepper, salt, chili flakes. Uh, you can have some garlic powder on it, but not exactly necessary. Um, and some paprika, uh, olive oil. If you have an air fryer, use an air fryer, otherwise in an oven, get them nice and crispy. And then just make a basic sandwich, right? Uh, bread. Um, then you can have, uh, I like hummus, or you can have baba hanoush, or you can have hamara, or any other, um, uh, basically, I don't want to call it salt, but any like a... Uh, uh, Mezza stuff, you know what exactly I'm talking about. Put on the base, uh, lettuce, tomato, cucumber, and then like f- f- three layers of halloumi because it's delicious. <laughs> and then again, uh, cucumber, tomato, lettuce, and then more uh, um, hummus or hummer or whatever else. Uh, and then enjoy the, the uh, lunch of kings. Um, that that's, sounds that's like a good sandwich. Wow. Uh, it's that's really not, good. Yeah. Like, fuck. I'll, I'll make you guys. Don't worry. Uh, once uh, once we meet up, I'm gonna make. I I, I need to fat, fatten JT up. He's been uh, <laughs> fighting off the American tendencies, but I need to <laughs> to overcome them. Yeah. Um, M hyphen. Thank you very. Oh gosh. Thank you very much for that hundred bucks. Wow. Dude, M hyphen is fucking that? insane, oh, dude. Shit. Yeah, dude thank this you so much. is, this is the that. same fucking mad lad uh, that that gave us. Uh, I don't know if he would be comfortable with us saying how much, but remember that insane donation on Patreon? That was like a one-time thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crazy money. What the- yeah. And he, not only that, but then he reached, uh, uh, I hope it's 
key I'll refer to you as they because I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, uh, have they even reached out on uh, on Patreon and Inbox, and they were like, "I can help you with this, with production, with this and this." Obviously, free of charge. I'm like, dude, stop offering me things you already given us too much. I would feel we would feel extremely weird about taking more. So uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very uh, much. On. I'm uh, the fuck in, man. In all- in awe of how much of a Chad uh, yes. <laughs> she is. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Um, hold on. There's something else we missed. Uh, opinion on something. Greetings from Ireland. Excuse me, Peter F. So, thank you very much. Um, yes, greetings from, from Ireland. Uh, I hope the uh, Anglos aren't bothering you guys too much. <laughs> um, Mason came in before that with 10 bucks. Uh, Luigi's Mansion best GameCube game. I'm ashamed to admit I've never played Luigi's Mansion. I was gonna be like, there's nothing else that needs to be said. Uh, <laughs> but uh, actually, I haven't ever. I have. You know what? I'm gonna go one step further. I've never played a Mario game. Not once. Not not nothing. You know, I don't think I've actually played a Nintendo game. Just generally. Really? Um, wow. You know, like uh, maybe I've played. I played Smash once. I've played what's it called? The racing one. The Mario racing one. The Mario, Mario Kart. Kart right? Yeah. Uh, I played it. I think once or twice. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I've never been a Nintendo thing. Over here, it's always a uh, what's Same. it called? Uh, it's a very place. Uh, Same. society I come from. Same. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, I know Nintendo is super. Place... Go ahead. Sorry, go on. Sorry. No, no, sorry. You go on. I was just going to say, I know Nintendo is very strict about piracy of their games and stuff. Uh, so, that, so that's <laughs> probably part of the reason they're not as common in other regions because they, they go out and bonk people with the ban hammer and uh, lawsuits and stuff more than the other consoles do. Mm. <laughs> and where I'm from, that that doesn't pass. You can get one disc with a hundred fucking games burnt <laughs> on. It's like, oh, whatever you want. Um, somehow they managed to port like Nintendo Nintendo games onto PlayStation. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> somebody said uh, Pokemon is Pokemon a, a Nintendo game? Yeah, yeah. Um, I hadn't, I didn't know. <laughs> like the, there are the current generation of Pokemon games are on the Switch. Yep. Okay, very interesting. I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, again, yeah, Pokemon. I was never into. I, I remember when I was very young, I looked. Um, uh, I watched the uh, what's it called um, uh, the Pokemon uh, show uh, briefly, mm-hmm. um, but just about that, nothing else. If you guys are interested on our video game uh, bullshit, we have a uh, the the next bonus episode that's coming out uh, is about that like partly. So it's a, um, you should uh, check that out. But yes, Pepsi Man live stream says Mikey uh, GC8. <laughs> one day, one day we'll get into a speed Pepsi Man speed. No, no, Finland ball. <laughs> Yes, yes. Look, we do both. Finish and roll. The, what was it, JT? Finish Roller. Your favorite game that you play. Finish Roller. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's why That's why mm. you grew up. You didn't need drugs growing up or like different substances because that game looks like a fucking trip. It really is. It's I mean, we, terrible. We do all of it. The, re- the reason I want to do Pepsi Man is because we can comment on American Suburbia as we play it. It's beautiful. And like, they have like American construction zones and, you know... One of the one part is like in a factory, and you get to basically experience what the United States is like through the lens of Pepsi Man. <laughs> I don't think there's a more uh, lucrative. It's, it's he's almost like a Christ figure <laughs> in, in the American <laughs> canon. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, oh, okay. Pepsi Man is like Call of Duty, but for America. Yeah, that was basically. That was I mean, go, going going to uh, an American middle school is like Call of Duty nowadays, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I can't help it. Whenever we get together, there has to be one school shooting reference. Um, yeah. <laughs> school uh, shooting references are like snakes eating its own ass. Yeah, while yeah, the yeah. Walls shout at uh, what? What was the? Well, at your Chattanooga radicalism. <laughs> we mentioned yeah, yeah. all of them. Are you happy now? Drink all the drinks. It's probably at least one person doing the drinking game. I was like, you don't. Yeah, be careful. Die <laughs> yeah. This You're gonna. Like, uh, you, please, if you're gonna do it, then be supervised. Okay, <laughs> this is not. <laughs> oh man, play the Palestinian liberation game. You know, there's a San Andreas mod. <laughs> really? I think I think it's called Tahrir Quds, which means like um, liberating um, uh, Jerusalem. I think uh, <laughs> is, is would be the English translation, roughly. Um, and it's basically like CJ uh, and. <laughs> He's like in a white beater, and he has like the 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 semi-automatic weapon. He's walking around, but it's they modeled like uh, the the dome of the rock. <laughs> <laughs> and he's walking around, and it's oh my god, it's it's hilarious. Oh uh, my god, um, I love it. Fucking hell. 
some, like some some things are like it's it's a meme, but also somebody very seriously worked on that. So but yeah, same like my skeleton guy, the tiki tiki, taki tak. <laughs> it's it's. No, dude, yeah. GTA San Andreas, I don't know if you guys remember the modding scene back then, but it was yeah. absolutely next level. Like, I could I could drive, like, a fucking Croatian or Serbian police car in that shit. <laughs> like, they, they, there was a skin where everybody was dressed more like Balkan yeah. people. Like, you couldn't mod the map too much, so you were still in L.A., but, like, everybody around it looked like your little village that you're from. And it's, like, this very... Whenever I think about it, this, like, nostalgia brain turns on. It gets, like, warm at the back of your head. It's uh, it, was, it was absolutely incredible. And you just download a thing and you plug it and it completely changes your game. And it, yeah. you didn't actually have to pay anything for it. The modern community in general is, is, is yeah. extremely cool. Kind of proof of concept on yeah. uh, an answer to the question of how would people do it without financial mm. incentive? I yeah. mean, oh, open source and modding is, is yeah, that's socialism <laughs> is, is one well, San Andreas people, mod. People even make, the, even, even make the argument, and I think it's a decent argument, that playing video games as a whole, especially difficult video games, where you get super stressed, uh, you uh, go through hours and hours of uh, hard work in order to finish a game, and at the end, you literally get no result, uh, no uh, no reward, except the feeling of satisfaction of you having done something that you socially consider a, a great, uh, uh, a big deal. Uh, and you did it, well, obviously, without no fa financial incentive. So you, you could use the argument that games, in a way, are a show of how people can insert thousands of hours into something uh, because they're passionate about the world, about the blah, 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 uh, and not because they actually expect to get something material out of it. I mean, even Minecraft, like people spend literally thousands of hours of their uh, of their day being online architects to create this fictional work, and they're not expecting anything uh, anything in return. And then, oh, by, but who would be an art architect? Who would build a building without financial incentive? Mm -hmm. All of these motherfuckers that can't wait to go back from the job they hate in which they're alienated. So they build buildings in, an, in a virtual world because daddy didn't have enough money for architecture school, you know? Dude, have you seen what kids do in Minecraft? For fuck's sake, like this is the biggest yeah, bullshit I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say there's I think yeah there's two more and then we can read them out and then we can start wrapping up uh, if that's all right with you guys. Sure. Um, <clears throat> sure. Mike Looning uh, sent twenty dollars. Thank you very much. He said, "Hakeem, my white sister and our white Midwestern family married into a big Jordanian family a few weeks ago, and I need to learn Arabic. Are there any phrases or idioms you can teach me that would impress them?" <laughs> um, first of all, congratulations. You are about to be introduced into a new world of cuisine. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's only one phrase I think that to impress them or would weird them out depending on the way you say it. But if there, if if you're ever in a very crowded space um, somewhere, then you can say it's like ummat al if you can uh, if if you uh, can replicate that ummat al um, That is basically the nation of the two heavy things is what that refers to, and it's supposed to, it's reference to like the, the the Muslim community and the two heavy things are supposed to be the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. Uh, peace and blessings be upon him. But um, the joke is being like, oh, it's so crowded. It's like everybody of the Muslim community is here. It's the, it, If you were to say it as a white guy, they're going to be like, first of all, where the fuck did you hear that? Number one. And number two, why did you deliver it so convincingly? And how did you know the correct context? And then they're going to be like, he's a fed, and then you might get in trouble. But <laughs> in the meanwhile, here's something that will keep you... Keep you uh... But yeah, uh, and uh, she Le Le Wolf, excuse me, uh, sent another five dollars. Thank you very much. She said, "Any games that depict socialist society well? Most games are set in the framework of capitalism. This I have no idea about. I'm sorry. Hmm. I know there's some like indie stuff, but I I haven't looked into it. Yeah, unless you guys know something that depict socialist society well. Hmm. Not that I can think of. I I mean there are uh, there's one that comes to mind about establishing a socialist society, kind of, which is Tonight We Riot, which is made by Means TV, um, the anti-capitalist streaming service. But that's really the only one that comes to mind at the moment. All right. Good to know. Um, and Jorge G. sent five dollars. He said, Yugopnik say 14. It sounds funny when Russians say it. I want to know if it's the same for the Balkans. Uh, 14. 14. 14. 14. <laughs> Uh, uh, depending on what part of the Balkans. <laughs> there we go. Love it. But uh, no, yes, uh, in in, in uh, Russian it's uh, funny because 
for some reason all Slavs say četiri, 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 four, four, uh, but then the Russians came and they're like, Sorok! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, that's, what, what can you expect from the orcs, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ironically, right. ironically, people are going to think, yeah, that, yeah, oh, yeah there no, you go. I, I literally, I, like, dude, why did you send the liberals in the walls over to my, my house? <laughs> Recent episodes, <laughs> I'm like seeing them, like, what the fuck is going on? You know, it's oh, actually oh. funny, I've been less troubled by my liberals, so I think uh, they, some of them did transfer over to you. Um, so thank you for taking my bird. Moved <laughs> flats, because they moved flats. You moved yeah. flats, so they needed yeah. to host while you were driving to the other city in which you live in. Right, now. I love it. Uh, yeah, so. Oh, people yeah. are mentioning Disco uh-huh. Elysium. Yes, good. Yeah, good remembering people. Disco Elysium is cool. Disco yeah, Elysium is a classic game, but yeah, it doesn't depict the socialist side. It depicts a post. I, actually, I felt super uh, like I could relate to the game a lot because it depicts a post attempt at socialism society. So I was like, oh, my God, this was basically all of Eastern Europe. Very cool. <laughs> you know, but, but then with, like, context from, like, uh, like South American islands, African islands, European, uh, Latino states. Blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, this Coliseum, 10 out of 10, 20 out of 20. We didn't mention this Coliseum in our bonus episode. What yeah. the fuck is wrong? What the hey, fuck? It means part two. That's what that means. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> All right. Uh, and with all that said, uh, I think we can start wrapping it up for today. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I hope you guys had a good time. Uh, I think this was a bit longer than our usual. I think this was two and a half hours or so. Yeah, mm-hmm. a little over. That's actually. how much we always go. That's how we yeah, go. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Well, yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody in the, in the chat's like, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Don't, you're, make, you're making me feel bad. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. No, no, don't worry. We're going to be back, inshallah. We'll, we'll, we'll do more of these. Um, so the next live stream is probably going to be very soon, right, guys? Because yeah. this one we did yeah, sure. at the end of the month, and then the next one is going to be more towards the beginning of the month, Pretty the way from before. Yeah. And so expect this soon. And it's going to be on a weekend, hopefully. Yeah. And uh, you'll, feel, you'll feel a bit spoiled, you guys. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, anyways, yes. Sorry. We, we, everybody's like, stay. Sorry. We got to go. <laughs> Or at least I gotta go. All right. Yeah. But, yeah um, we'll do it again. Thank soon. you very much. Yeah, hey, we'll do it very soon. No worries. Thank you very much, everybody, for all the love and support. Um, Adrian Eng is like, I just joined. It's okay. You have two <laughs> and a half hours. Join us the next time. We'll also start doing more. Uh, what's it called? Um, variation times, inshallah, in the future. So, so uh, we'll have uh, an ability to to uh, get to different people in different time zones, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, we love you all, and uh, yeah, um, <laughs> there's nothing else to say. See you. Ne- Bye, guys. See you next time. We love you. Bye, my name, my name's D. <laughs> all right, bye.